Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the Council Chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 46th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 16th Council meeting of 2021. The agenda tonight is 34 pages long, includes 82 pieces of legislation. The agenda also includes a public comment period, one resolution on public hearing, along with 28 regular resolutions, only two first reading bills, 15 second reading bills, and 37 ordinances on third and final reading. There may be other late legislation coming in as well. There are three appointments to city boards and commissions up tonight, including TSU President Dr. Glenda Glover to the airport authority, and two medical doctors, Tamika Hudson and Raymond Martin, to the hospital authority. The council will also fill a vacancy tonight on the Metro Industrial Development Board. Due to the latest surge in COVID-19 infections with the Delta variants, Metro Board of Health has re reinstated a mask mandate uh, in all city-owned buildings, so everyone here tonight will be wearing masks. Has no significant legislation tonight are two late file bills concerning COVID-19. One is a resolution, one is an ordinance. Both would empower the Metro Board of Health to issue an order requiring masks be worn in any building open to the public or any open space. This all to help curb the virus surge. Since these matters were filed late, it takes special approval of the council to consider these matters tonight. If more than two meetings object, the members object, the bills will be deferred until the first meeting in September. Governor Milley issued an executive order on Monday forbidding school boards or boards of health to issue a mask mandate impacting schools without parent parental opt-outs. Well, these mass moves by the council run into, also run into conflict with the governor. Another memorializing resolution up tonight, the council is being asked under RS 2021-1110 to support the Metro School Board and it's still in place mass mandate to fight COVID-19, a move which the resolution says, quote, will increase the likelihood of schools remaining open. All this comes is under resolution 2021-1090. The council also approved the contract tonight for Metro's new chief medical and health director. He is Dr. Gil Wright, who has been acting in that position for the past seven months during the pandemic. His contract is three years in length as a base salary of $235,000. The health director's contract is the only one of Metro's department heads that the council must approve under the city charter. This is what the longtime original Metro health director, Dr. Don Lentz, wanted. And 58 years later, it's still that way. Under other resolutions tonight, the council is again considering RS 2021-1030 to approve a new 10-year solid waste plan for the city with the goal to achieve zero, zero solid waste within 30 years. Potential issues in phase one of the plan is a pay-as-you-throw program in residential waste collection. It would cost as much as $28.3 million in the first phase. Residential waste collection is also now provided and paid for under property taxes paid by residents in the Urban Services District. Postpan sees a solid waste authority being created under state law to create a new separate fee for trash service. This could mean a deferral tonight for more study on the resolution. Under RS 2021-1087, the council approved the Metro Action Commission accepting $9.2 million in American Rescue f uh, federal funds to assist eligible households in Nashville with underpaid rent utilities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This has been a problem nationwide getting these funds distributed. Nashville's reporting doing better than the rest of the country, but the need is still great, especially as legal questions remain over how long an eviction moratorium will stay in effect. Other grants to Metro likely will be accepted tonight by the council include RS 2021-1096 from the state, goes to Metro Police, it would be for $150,000 to reduce gun violence in target areas. Money would be used for equipment and police overtime. Resolutions 2021 1089 for, is for $25,000. It comes from Metro Historical Foundation. It will be used towards cost for the ongoing master plan for Fort Bagley Park. Resolution 2021-1091 from Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control will provide $15,500 in funds for families experiencing difficulty with only maintaining ownership of their pets, as well as funding for a microchip clinic and for emergency medical care for shelter animals. Resolution 2021-1092 and 93 from the State Health Department would increase grant funding by $178,000 for the Metro Health Department to prevent and control the use of tobacco. Other resolutions, uh, including RS 2021-1102, it indicates concern about the use of electric bikes on city's greenways. More specifically, the resolution requests city officials to solicit community support and gather data from other cities regarding how they use electric bicycles on their greenways and requests also a moratorium on any future council legislation related to electric bicycles on greenways until the community input and data can be collected. RS 2021-1108 settles a claim against the city by State Representative Vincent Dixie in the amount of just over $15,000 damage caused to his personal business by a Metro water main break. Our resolution 2021-1109 achieves, recognizes the uh, achievements of Nashville swimmer and Olympian bronze medalist Alex Walsh of Harpeth Hall High School. 
Another memorial item resolution is RS-2021. It celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Frisk Museum downtown. On second reading, the council again faces the choice of what to do regarding the use of license plate scanners by law enforcement in Davidson County. The council a few weeks ago indefinitely deferred two bills. One has returned, but by rule must be deferred tonight, which happens to all bills that have been indefinitely deferred when they come back. Another bill is a new measure, although it may well have some changes made into it. The other one, it will be deferred tonight, has at least two amendments pending on it. Uh, one of the major concerns in all these bills has been both oversight and preserving privacy. We'll see what the council wants to do about this tonight. Second reading bill on agenda tonight also includes BL 2021-795 to ban intermodal containers on residential property after 90 days. BL 2021-835 asks for a study of future sewer infrastructure needs in Nashville and Davidson County and provide a report to the council in two years. Water officials say they already have plenty of such studies and they are already available. On third reading, there are a couple of zoning bills disapproved by the Planning Commission. We understand one will be deferred tonight. Let's watch and see what happens. Remember, it takes a two-thirds vote of a disapproving bill or 27 votes to get final passage on a bill that is disapproved by the Planning Commission if it's a zoning matter. Under BL 2021-834 is on third reading. The council will likely approve a contract between Metro Police and the Metro Mental Health Cooperative. The group will provide support to officers in responding to mental health health crisis and call for services. Finally, on third reading, the council is expected to approve BL 2021-829 to establish a protection and replacement plan for trees on city property. If you want to follow the tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and a staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are on the meeting agenda. Let's now go to Vice Mayor Jim Schubel. He will gavel tonight's council meeting to order shortly. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> Where's your mom? Okay, there she is. Okay, all right, you ready? <coughs> Three times, right there. Very good. Okay, give me that. Thank you. Good boy. So will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, August the 17th, 2021. 
all members of the council as well as the public. Please rise for the invocation. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation this evening will be offered by Carol Grady Mansour of the Baha'i Temple, the guest of Council Member Zulfat Sawara. This is a prayer for unity. Oh my God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal to them thy great purpose. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O oh God, in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee. O oh God, leave them not to themselves but guide their steps by the light of thy knowledge and cheer their hearts by thy love. Verily, thou art their helper and their Lord. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Y'all may be seated. Um, tonight, our special guest who banked in the uh, council meeting is a young lady by the name of Journey Muse. She is a third grader. Uh, I met her at an event the other day that Pastor Fuzz had. Uh, it was one Nashville. Uh, she was advocating at that meeting for albinism. And uh, that is a, a special thing that, uh, that she has, and she is a major advocate. She speaks very well, and uh, I think she wanted to speak to you for a couple of hours, and I told her, no, that was not going to be allowed. <laughs> a couple of minutes. Um, but... Um, uh, do you want to say anything to this group? Okay, you're welcome. There you go. Albinism is about the hair, skin, and eyes, and no nicotation, and that's all about albinism. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go. We're following rules. So if you're interested, I know her parents are back there, or as a journey moves around back out to the back of the chamber, you can stop and talk to her about what she um, knows. So thank you very much. Here you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Do you know how to find your way out? This way. There we go. All right, without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from August 3rd, 2021? I hear a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, any messages from the mayor? No, Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right. <clears throat> okay, a couple of items. Um, thoughts and prayers are with Council Member Withers. I know he's here tonight. Upon the passing of his father, um, we um, certainly are so sorry to hear about that. We're, uh, we're glad you're here. Okay. Um, as you know, um, we have an opening for the position on the Community Oversight Board. Uh, those nominations were due today um, at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And I have got uh, the list of names. So the nominations that will be uh, considered at the next meeting, three nominations, uh, fill the unexpired term previously held by Stephanie Kong. Uh, that term expires January 31st, 2024. Uh, Ahmed Abdullah, who was nominated by the American Muslim Advisory Council. Preston Ship, nominated by Unheard Voices Outreach and uh, Rafa Institute, and Catherine Willey, who was nominated by Right on Women. Those are the three individuals uh, who um, submitted nominations. They'll go through the regular process, and they will be before us at the next meeting. 
Um, we do have several openings for additional spots on the Industrial Development Board, uh, but that announcement will be made at the next meeting. Um, I believe um, under rules, we're going to um, we're going to look and see if there are nominations for the one position that's open up on the Industrial Development Board. That's actually on page two of your agenda. Um, I know that there are suggested changes to the rules uh, that we're going to at least talk about tonight. I'm going to wait until the Rules Committee um, comes up for discussion to see, um, uh, basically for discussion about the rules. Again, I don't think we're voting on them tonight. Um, but I am going to uh, kind of wait for that discussion and then I will tell you basically how at least I'm prepared to proceed uh, with committee chairs and committee reassignments. Um, but um, I need to, um, I think we're probably going to hold until we have that discussion to kind of see where we are with the rules. Uh, even with that, um, this is typically the end of the cycle and typically you have new chairs appointed at the next meeting, but because we have these rule changes, I think we're going to wait. Um, however, uh, the president pro tem, uh, which is currently Council Member Mendes, uh, that term expires August 31st, 2022. And so we will be in a position at the next meeting to consider electing a president pro tem. So if you're interested in doing that, that's up at the next meeting. We'll actually take nominations and vote at the next meeting. So if you're interested in serving as the pro tem, that will be at the next uh, council meeting. So I believe that gets us to um, elections and confirmations. Uh, we've got a couple elections and confirmations, and then we've got some reports on these rules. So I'm going to recognize Council Member Johnston. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we considered several um, appointments. The appointment of Dr. Glenda Glover for a term expiring June 4th, 2025 to the Airport Authority. Um, for the Hospital Authority, two appointments. One, Dr. Tamika Hudson to fill the unexpired term of Alexandria Fisher for a term expiring September 6th, 2021, and to fill the subsequent term expiring September 6th, 2026. Um, the Hospital Authority, again, Dr. Uh, Raymond Martin for a term expiring June 28th, 2026. Um, and we voted five in favor, zero against for those, and I would move their approval. Okay, you got all three, Dr. Glover, uh, Dr. Hudson, and Dr. Martin? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, the, the motion is to uh, confirm uh, those three nominations, the appointment of Dr. Glover for the Airport Authority, the appointment of Dr. Tamika Hudson for the Hospital Authority, the appointment of Dr. Raymond Martin for the Hospital Authority, um, proper motion, proper second. Any discussion? on those appointments. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of those three appointments say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, before we go on, um, I, I don't know if any of the three are here. Um, Dr. Glover, Dr. Glover, there's Dr. Glover, I see her. <clears throat> Dr. Glover, you're going to get all the ovation. Dr. Hudson, <laughs> Dr. Hudson, are you here as well? Dr. Hudson, please stand up. <laughs> and Dr. Raymond Martin, if you would please stand up as well. All right, on behalf of the entire Metro Council, we really do thank you for your willingness to serve, volunteer your time and expertise to help Nashville and Davidson County. So thank you very much. You are all three confirmed. You are welcome to stay here, or you can sneak out when I'm not looking. All right, so thank you all for being here. Uh, Council Member Johnston, I'm going to come back to you, uh, Industrial Development Board. Thank, um, yes, well... We didn't hear anyone for the Industrial Development Board. We're taking names, but I need to suspend the rules for the next two appointments to the Board of Equalization. All right. All right. So um, so w what we have here um, is a suspension of the rules. We have, um, I think it's two picks for the Board of Equalization. They came in late, but there's a need to do it. So that's why you're moving to suspend the rules. Is there objection to suspension of the rules to consider those picks at this time? Seeing none, uh, rules are suspended. Councilmember Johnston, you're on your picks. Thank you. Um, we looked at the appointment of uh, both Ms. Glenda Chambers and Ms. Deb Dawson for, for terms expiring April 1st, 2022. 
Um, the committee voted five in favor, zero against, and I would move their approval. Okay, you've heard Councilmember Johnston. I got a motion to approve both, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the two picks? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those two picks are, um, the motion is adopted. All right, before we get into proposed rules and amendments, I've got the Industrial Development Board. What that means basically is that um, those nominations are up tonight. Uh, we are seeking nominations. The actual election will be held at the first meeting in September. Um, and we take nominations from the floor. So this is to fill the unexpired term of Ginger House for a term expiring September 19th, 2023. I've got hands up. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to nominate Mark Wright. Mark Wright. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Brian Cordova. Brian, Brian Cordova? Yes. Okay. Uh, Council Member Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to uh, nominate Reverend Jeff Carr. Okay. okay. Uh, Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Mr. Joshua Haston. Could you spell the last name? H-A-S-T-O-N. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Amir, A-M-R, Husseini, H-U-S-S-E-I-N-I. -S -S -E Madam Clark, you got that? Do we need to repeat it? Uh, Council Member Swar, could you repeat it and um, again uh, spell just so make, we make sure we get it right? A as in Apple, M as in Mary, R as in Ronald. <laughs> okay. And H U S S E I N I. Okay. All right. Got it. Any other nominations? Okay, so we've got five nominations. They will be considered um, at the next meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, they're going to need to submit different forms. Is that correct? Okay, if they're just the, to the council Okay, members. so uh, the clerk will reach out to all council members, make sure we have the proper addresses, proper email addresses, and these individuals need to get a questionnaire back in. They will come before the Rules Committee. Uh, at the next meeting, and then we will vote on them at the next meeting, which is September the 7th of 2021. Okay. So, um, again, this is for the one seat. Remember that we have three seats coming up after this that we'll be making an announcement at, um, at the next meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, Council Member Johnston, um, now um, we've got, um, it's um, subsection F, it's the proposed rules amendment. Um, I'm going to recognize you for an explanation of what this is. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. So we have had this conversation over the course of several months about trying to, uh, to make some changes to make our committee structure a more um, efficient and effective possibly. Um, there's obviously a ton of ways to do it. Um, we did have a special called meeting last Thursday, and seven council members showed up. Um, we made some changes. Uh, there's some of you that probably have a proposed committee structure on your desk. That's outdated because that was for the meeting. We've changed since then. Based off of our conversation that we had Thursday night, we made some changes. Hannah went ahead and drafted um, the rules uh, change because it affects several different things, which is why it's so long. Um, but I don't think that we're even ready right now to discuss this on the floor. I'm happy to if, if we want to, um, but I've just asked um, Rosie, I think we're going to have another, uh, no, I know we're going to have another special called Rules Committee on August the 26th here in Chambers. I encourage everyone to show up, please. 
Um, it will look different. I think um, there's more call for separating out because right now we're down to like eight committees down from 14. Um, and so we may end up at like 11 or something like that, but just to try to make some changes, we definitely need to change public works to the transportation because there is no public works department um, really anymore. So there's, there's some certain changes that will have to happen. Um, so again, I'm happy to have this conversation now or we can have our special called meeting and hopefully come up with a better consensus from the entire body versus just a small group of us um, or, you know, however anybody want, wants to handle it. I did think it was interesting. Rosie um, brought up an, an article from 1963 when our government was actually combined from with city and county where we started off with 14 committees. We still have 14 committees. They're a little bit different. And I, I shared that with you um, in the email through Rosie, but it was just interesting to see how we've evolved a little bit and then in so many ways how we've stayed the same since 1963. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit exciting to think about updating where we are now because our council looks very different from where we did in 1963. Our city looks a lot different. And so probably our committee structure should maybe reflect that as well. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions or have a discussion. It's really sort of I'm at the will of the body. Any questions for Council Member Johnston? Again, it sounds like you're gonna have a rules committee meeting where everybody can have a chance to kind of look at these things. Um, everybody, please take a look. Uh, as Council Member Johnston has pointed out, these rules haven't been changed since, uh, since Larry Hager was first on the council. And uh, <laughs> Council Member Hager is not in the room, so I figured I could say that. Um, so um, take a look and see if this is something you all wanna, wanna do. Um, Here's my, um, here's how it affects uh, at least what I'm having a look at. Um, with the idea that you all are looking at considering changes to the number of committees, uh, it doesn't really make any sense for me to start selecting committee chairs, which is typically what we do at this time. We usually do it at the beginning of, for the September, uh, start of the September term. Um, but if the committees are gonna change, doesn't make any much sense to go ahead and pick uh, committee chairs because some of those committees may disappear after a month. So um, what I would do, unless there's an objection, is I would propose pursuant to rule three that I hold on to appointing any successors or anything regarding the committees uh, and that I request that the current chairs and the com current committees carry on through the month of September. Uh, that plan would, um, but then by that time, I would know whether the committee changes are being made by this group. Uh, if they're not made, that's fine as well. But um, certainly, if you're going to consider decreasing the number of committees, there's no reason to start, again, picking committee chairs that may no longer chair particular committees. Um, if that's okay, I would simply wait, ask everybody to continue on for a month so you all can figure out uh, from a rules perspective whether you want to keep the rules that you have or if you want to make changes. Um, the idea, if we're going to do that, um, we could also carry forth in terms of the chairs of the Planning and Zoning Committee, chair of the Traffic and Parking Committee, appointments to the Greenways Commission, Metropolitan Safety Advisory Board, Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission, Metropolitan Action Commission, and selections of members to uh, serve on the audit committee from this body. The reason why it's important to wait is that some of these appointments have to be made from particular committees, and I'm not sure exactly how that's all gonna play out with the committees maybe changing. Um, questions before I just ask if there's any objection that we just hold. It's okay. Uh, we've checked, I think, most of the, um, I think we've almost checked every one of the statutes. Um, but um, if you have questions, um, uh, I'm here to answer them, and so is uh, the director of the council. Uh, Councilman Roten, you're recognized. Thank you. I was just going to ask about the two elected committees. Is that in the rules or in the, I, I just was curious about that. If you could explain that for us, thank you. Sure. I'll start, and then uh, Ms. Zeitland can, uh, so we looked at that. It's in the charter. Um, both um, the position that Council Member Murphy has and the, commission, uh, the position that Council Member O'Connell have, those are two-year terms. Now, what's interesting, and this has been varied over the period of time, um, when we selected those individuals, which was on October the 15th of, tw of 2019, many, many years ago, um, they were selected for a two-year term 
but when we selected them on October 15th, the two-year term was set to expire August 31st of 2021. Okay, that's not really a necessarily officially a two-year term, but that's what it says. It doesn't have a lot of language in there that allows to, to clarify how that works. Um, but what happens, Councilman Roten, is that um, if we were to extend the term to October the 15th, the person that is selected to serve as the chair of that commission going for forth would not serve a two-year term because that's going to run into the next council term. And so it's, it's been done different ways, and I'll let Ms. Eitlin clarify that, but uh, typically we do it right now. And I guess that was, I was going to clear up my question, I guess. Are those committees actually, they're actually named in the charter? So we will not be changing those committees if they are named in the charter. Is that not correct? Ms. Eitlin. So they're on, the only committee that's actually named in the charter is the planning committee. The traffic and parking committee is actually not named in the charter. So uh, the planning committee currently is the planning, zoning, and historical committee. I think as long as planning is in the title, it would still comply with that charter provision. I also want to point out that there is a general provision in the charter that allows members of any boards and commissions to hold over for 60 days after their term ends until a, an, a successor can be appointed. So I think that would also apply here. Councilman Roten, answer your question. That answered my question. Thank okay. you, Mr. Bye. Any other questions about this? Okay, just again, in order to allow everybody the chance to kind of take a look and make sure that Councilmember Johnston can have her meeting and everybody can take a look and then you all can decide whether you want to make changes or not, uh, then we will, uh, again, without objection, uh, hold on through the month of September um, and allow committees and the chairs to, to remain the same. Again, um, the, uh, the pro tem election, which is a little different from this, will be held at the next meeting. Okay. I believe that covers all the different things we had at the beginning of the meeting, which was a lot. Um, so thank you all for uh, your attention to this. Um, and again, please pay attention to when Council Member Johnson calls that Rules Committee meeting so everybody can participate. All right, we are now ready for um, the public comment period. This is for members of the public that have signed up in advance to speak to the Council. Uh, each individual will have two minutes in which to speak. We have six people who have signed up tonight to talk, uh, and I've got the order in which they are, um, have signed up. Um, the uh, first individual up tonight is uh, Mohammed Nasser from uh, Councilmember O'Connell's district. He's going to talk about alley closures. He's from 159 Fane Street. Mr. Uh, Nasser, I hope I pronounced your name right. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you are welcome to go. You've got two minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, my house is at 159 Fane Street. Uh, behind the house and all of my neighbors, there is an alleyway that's been abandoned. Uh, it's overgrown. It's not paved. Um, there's some wild animals that live back there. And we are asking the council and uh, Councilperson O'Connell if you would support me and my neighbors in a um, closure of the alley. I have the support of uh, about four of my neighbors, but two of them I cannot get a hold of because uh, it was deeded to them so long ago that I can't find any up-to-date contact information. And um, without their signatures, I'm unable to uh, proceed with the alley closure with the city without the council person's approval. Is that it? Yes, sir, that's all. All right, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Nicole Williams. Uh, she's from uh, Council Member Murphy's District, District 24, 4425 West Lawn Drive, uh, talking about the uh, council process and making uh, the council more accessible to the general public. Ms. Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. Um, I'm excited to be here tonight. Are y'all excited to be here? I hope you are, because you should be, because every first and third Tuesday of the month, y'all get to come down here and literally control the levers of power. I just want you to sit with that for a second. That's heavy. Um, you literally create law. Now, in a, in a couple of weeks, y'all are going to be talking about something that I know that many of you are sick of talking about. Um, and I heard at least one of you say as much uh, on the virtual floor a few months back. And when I heard that, I thought, man, what I wouldn't give for the privilege of being sick of talking about something. 
I'm not really sure that I understand where our priorities are if we have a years long debate and a whole special committee called to talk about council benefits, but on issues of huge importance that affect literally our entire city, all we get are a few virtual meetings and um, no real time for meaningful public input and back and forth. Um, you know, I have found many ways to make my voice heard because I have the resources to do that. But many of the people who are most affected by the decisions that you all make here do not have those resources. And I just think it's really easy to forget about what a privilege it is to serve the people of this city. What a privilege it is to talk about a piece of legislation for so long that you feel sick of it. What a privilege it is to sit there in the chamber debating these issues while we sit back here in the gallery quietly watching. And so tonight and every other night, when you start to get tired and annoyed and you think like if someone doesn't call the question soon, I'm going to start flipping tables, um, I would just encourage you guys to take a minute and think what a privilege it is to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you for being here. Uh, next up is uh, Dr. Lamitra Scott. Uh, she's from Councilmember Rosenberg's uh, district, District 35, 776 Gloucester Lane. Uh, she's talking about sickle cell disease. And I believe um, I saw Dr. Scott also at uh, the Pastor Fuzz event. Dr. Scott, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Members, for the time tonight. Good evening. My name is Dr. Lamitra Scott, and I'm a pharmacist and executive director of Breaking the Sickle Cell Cycle Foundation. My most important title is that of mom. I'm the mother of an eight-year-old who has sickle cell disease, which is a chronic, painful genetic blood disorder that disproportionately affects minority populations. Patients and families of the sickle cell community do not have sufficient support in Nashville to help them succeed with the diagnosis of sickle cell. Areas of unmet need include education, employment, and access to equitable care. Complications from sickle cell disease can arise as early as six months old. This means that they will have problems or could have problems in education. 70% of the Metro Nashville public school system is comprised of minority populations. The school system could benefit from resources dedicated to improving the understanding among all staff and educators on how sickle cell disease can impact a child's physical health, as well as the student's cognition, mental health, and the effects on school attendance. Poor academic attainment among children limits their future earning potential and their ability to attain financial independence. This also bleeds over into the adult population who has sickle cell disease, and it's hard for them to have gainful employment due to work absenteeism that's caused by frequent hospitalizations brought upon by the pain crisis of sickle cell disease. This leads to increased unemployment rates, and it creates shelter and food insecurities. There are issues with access to health care. Improving access to health care can be established by having health equity for all sickle cell patients. So how can the council help? The council can help by supporting organizations and programs that work to increase sickle cell disease awareness and education, which addresses the public health issues that arise from the unmet needs within the sickle cell community, an approach which encompasses the medical, educational, and psychosocial needs of the patient would be most beneficial. Thank you all for your time, and I hope to see you at the Sickle Cell 5K on September 18th. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Uh, next speaker is uh, Katrina Green. Uh, she is uh, from Councilmember Withers District. Uh, 407 uh, Bushnell Street, uh, medical physician, like to speak about better COVID mitigation measures. Yes, hi. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for letting me speak today. My name is Dr. Katrina Green. I'm an emergency physician. I live and work here in Nashville. I've been here for 10 years now. I've battled this pandemic for over a year. So much has changed in that year. We now have studies that show that masks work to slow the spread of the virus, especially good quality masks. We also have several safe and effective vaccines that are widely available. Despite this, COVID continues to plague our city and our state. We let our guard down before enough people were vaccinated to safely open up and we're now paying the price. Hospitals are filling up to capacity. There are not enough nurses to staff them. This weekend, I was working in Lawrenceburg, treating COVID patients sick enough to be in the ICU. My hospital had no beds, so we reached out to the city here. Every hospital in Nashville, every hospital, 
was filled to capacity. Our healthcare system has been strained for over a year and we continue to ask nurses and doctors to do more with less. The announcement for Governor Lee that lets parents opt out of local school district mask requirements has me outraged. We are already seeing outbreaks in several school districts without a mask requirement. Unless you're wearing an N95 like I do in the hospital, masks will only work as a mitigation tactic if everyone is wearing them. What the governor did yesterday was to erase any protection unvaccinated children had against the Delta variant. We have seen that Delta is more contagious and it is affecting children more than earlier strains of the virus. I applauded the decision by the Metro Nashville Public School District to require masks in schools for everyone. And I stand by them now, even as the governor tries to override that decision. I thank the Nashville City Council members who have proposed the resolution to support the Metro Nashville schools. I would like to point out that we are requiring the children of Nashville to mask up in schools, but not elsewhere. We need everyone to wear a mask indoors, vaccinated or not, everywhere to slow the spread of the virus. I urge you all to push the Metro Health Department and Mayor Cooper to pass an indoor mask requirement citywide in Davidson County. Please help us healthcare workers. We're exhausted. We can't keep doing this forever. We need your help. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amy, Amy Mono is uh, next uh, from Council Member Henderson's district, District 34, 526 Star Boulevard, COVID mitigation <laughs> concerns. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Amy Gordon Bono. I'm from District 34. I'm a primary care doctor who's been practicing in Nashville for 10 years. Um, I've advocated for COVID mitigation measures since the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm going to continue to beat that same public health drum. I stand before you today to continue advocating for an indoor mask mandate in Nashville. We need to do better for each other, and we need to do better for each other right now. I'm thankful to be in a metro government building where um, masks are required. I'm thankful I see faces that are masked in front of me. Um, quite simply, masks work to reduce the spread of respiratory illness and control COVID exposure. You as city leaders should also know that mask mandates work. With a mask mandate, you can save lives. Yes, did you know that the privilege of saving lives is not just reserved for stressed out, weary doctors and healthcare workers? You can save lives. Um, as civil servants, you have the capacity and the privilege to do so. The most pertinent data I can provide for mass mandates working to reduce hospitalizations and death come from October and November 2020 Vanderbilt Department of Public Policy, sorry, Health Policy Studies that found that Tennessee areas where mask requirements were instituted over the summer of 2020 have substantially lowered death rates due to COVID-19 as compared to areas without mask requirements. Additionally, according to the studies, areas without mask requirements have increases in COVID-19 hospitalizations and depressed consumer spending. Happy to email those to you. I also have lots of trees that are available to you over there. Uh, to be clear, today we have worse COVID metrics, a worse, more transmissible Delta COVID enemy, and seemingly less desire to do anything about it. When our city announced its masking order June 28, 2020, our COVID metrics were better then than they are now. Currently, our new case average is near double what it was on that June 2020 day. We need a layered approach to fighting COVID. Uh, my colleagues and I have been trying to express these concerns to Mayor Cooper. We've not been able to air our concerns with his office, hence we are showing up for our city today. Um, in any case, my time's expired. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Brenner. Thank you. The last uh, speaker is uh, Lucan uh, Cooper. Uh, from Councilmember Young's District, District 10, 526 Star Boulevard, uh, Community Sickle Cell Support for Adults. Good evening. Um, my name is Lacan, and I've been living with sickle cell for 44 years. And I feel that the ER treats sickle cell patients 
totally different from any other patients that come through the ER. There has been times where I personally had to wait over six hours in the waiting room just to get care, and I see people come and go, but I'm still sitting there. And as I sit there, the pain gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So um, when I do finally get in the back, the pain meds are not working because it, I done went too long without it. So I just want them to be more educated and not look at us as drug seekers because all of us are not drug seekers. And I also want to see if there's any way where, since they're, they know about it, they know we need the IV fluids. It's not so much as getting the pain medicine, but it's while we're sitting there them four to six hours, we can get the IV fluids to help push our blood because when our blood stops flowing, our organs are not getting the oxygen they need. So that's one of the reasons we have the pain. And that's all I'm asking for. That's not too much to ask for. And also, I'm sorry, um, sickle cell patients don't look like they're in pain. As a result, experience extended ER wait times. I talked about that. Sickle cell patients labeled as drug seeker due to lack of understanding the disease, denied appropriate care. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. So thank you all for participating. That's the public comment period. Uh, very interesting comments from, from all those six. Uh, before we get into the resolutions, um, I had meant to do this before, but uh, Dr. Gilride from the Health Department is here. And since we've just had some discussions about COVID, I'm gonna ask Dr. Wright uh, to come to the back podium and give us just a brief discussion on uh, an update on where we are currently with COVID numbers. Dr. Wright, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, Councilman. Um, today, 55.9% of all Davidson County residents have had at least one vaccine, and just under 50% at 49.8% have are, are fully vaccinated. Uh, our current breakthrough rate is 0.07%, uh, so seven out of uh, 1,000 people that have been vaccinated are um, getting the virus. Hospitals, um, hospitals here are steady in their, um, and actually slightly better this week than they have been. Uh, 99, 98% of those that have been uh, hospitalized are unvaccinated. Uh, we really have a problem with vaccination and, and getting people vaccinated. Um, and, and we continue to work on that. We uh, have done over 400 mobile events uh, locally. Uh, year to date, uh, trying to get vaccine in arms. Um, drive throughs continue to do testing and vaccination. We currently still have to capacity for testing at our Kmart site, but we are working with OEM to look at a second site for vaccination and uh, testing. Um, and plans, and we're, all of that builds up to the fact that we are uh, now being able to give a third dose to those that are immune compromised. And uh, probably in the very near future, we'll be able to give a uh, booster or a third, another third dose to the general public. Um, that could happen as early as mid-September. Um, FDA is currently considering that. If that happens, we are making plans already for how we would go about doing that. Um, obviously, there are a lot of pharmacies and other places available now that weren't initially available where we could, where you could get vaccinated. And uh, Vaccine Finder uh, on the web is actually very good at finding uh, a match. Um, children, five to 11, uh, we are unsure exactly when they will become available for vaccination. It could be as early as October, could be December, but I think probably yet this fall, winter, um, the FDA is uh, reviewing additional safety data uh, on that at this time. So that's kind of uh, currently where we're at, and uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Thank you for being here. 
All right, so we are now ready to proceed with uh, resolutions on public hearing. We only have one tonight. Uh, here's how it works. Uh, we'll call up the resolution, uh, refer to the sponsor. Sponsor moves to defer the public hearing. Sponsor will call for a, if, if the sponsor doesn't defer the public hearing, we'll have a public hearing tonight. Uh, ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution. Then a show of hands of those who are here in opposition. If anyone in favor of the me measure wishes to speak, I'll ask you to come forward, find the microphone, introduce yourself, give us your address, two minutes in which to speak. I will then ask if anyone else uh, who is opposed wishes to speak. And after that process, I'll close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. Um, we only have one tonight. It is 2021-1085. Council Member Withers is the sponsor. Uh, resolution exempting the uh, Authentique, located at 925 Gallatin Avenue, Suite 103, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? You certainly can. Councilmember Gamble, you recognize public safety. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public safety recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Councilmember Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open on uh, 1085. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. Didn't see anybody on either side. Declare the, the uh, public hearing closed. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. All right. Council Member Withers has moved approval properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nobody in the queue, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Nope. You adopt. All right. We are now ready for um, the uh, consent resolutions and resolutions. I'm going to go through uh, the items that are on the consent agenda. Uh, listen carefully, make sure that uh, we've got them all correct. Uh, these are the items on the consent agenda, okay? Uh, item number two, RS 2021-1030 is on consent. 1086 is on consent, that's item number three. 2021-1087 uh, on consent. 1088 on consent. 1091 on consent. 1092 on consent, 1093 on consent, 1094 is on consent, 1095 is on consent, 1096 is on consent, 1097 is on consent, 1098 on consent, 1099 is on consent, 1100 is on consent, 1101 is on consent, 1103 is on consent, 1105 on consent, 1106 on consent, 1108 on consent, 1109 on consent, 1110 is on consent, and 1111 is on consent. Um, any uh, things that need to be moved off? Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to pull that last one, uh, item 28, 1111. Okay. 2021-11-11, okay. Anything else needs to be pulled? Okay. 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 All right. <clears throat> so here goes. Uh, RS-2021-1030 by Nash and Allen, a resolution approving a solid waste regional plan for Davidson County, Tennessee. Um, Council Member Toombs has the next one, RS-2021-1086, resolution on approving a contract for purchase of insurance services with Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services agent for various insurance, providing insurance coverage for Metro, RS-2021-1087, Suara, Toombs, Taylor, and others. Resolution approving a grant for the U.S. Department of Treasury to the Metropolitan Government acting through the, action, uh, the Metro Action Commission to be used for emergency rental assistance, uh, RS-2021-1088 by Toombs, Taylor, Welsh, and others. A resolution accepting a Summer Jobs Con Connect grant from the Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund to the Metropolitan Government through the Metro Action Commission to implement a comprehensive financial empowerment program, provides participants with access to safe bank or credit union products. Uh, RS, the next one is RS-2021-1091. That's item number eight. RS-2021-1091, Toombs, Taylor, and Bradford. Resolution accepting a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control 
to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide funding for families experiencing difficulty maintaining ownership of their pets, provide for microchip clinics, and to provide funding for emergency medical care for shelter animals. RS 2021-1092, Toombs, Taylor, and others, a resolution approving Amendment 1 uh, to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government uh, through the Board of Health to improve the health of the citizens of Davidson County through targeted strategies to prevent and control the use of tobacco. Uh, RS 2021 1093, Toombs, Taylor, Welsh, and Hurt. It's a resolution approving Amendment 5 to a grant contract from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to improve the health of those residing in or visiting Davidson County through targeted strategies to prevent and control the use of tobacco products. RS 2021 1094, Toombs, Taylor, Welsh, and others. Resolution accepting a grant for the United Way of Greater Nashville to the Metropolitan Government. Uh, through the Metro Social Services Homeless Impact Division to provide a framework to secure data sharing to collect client level data and data on the provision of housing and services to homeless individuals and families and persons at risk of homelessness. RS 2021-1095 by Councilmember Toombs. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle personal injury claim of Jennifer Lockhart and David Christian against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $250,000. RS 2021-1096, Toombs, Gamble, and Allen, and Allen. Resolution accepting a Project Safe Neighborhood Grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration Administration, uh, acting through the Metro Police Department to reduce gun violence in Nashville. Uh, item number 14, RS 2021 1097, Toombs, Gamble, and Welsh. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a VOCA grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration, Office of Criminal Justice Programs to Metro, through the Nashville Police Department to fund a position of a VOCA law enforcement victim coordinator. RS 2021 1098, Toombs, Gamble, and Welsh. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a Victims of Crime Act, that's a VOCA grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration, to the Metro and Government through the Police Department to fund counselor and victim advocate positions to provide mental health services, support services, in criminal justice systems advocacy. RS 2021-1099 by Toombs and Gamble. Resolution approving the Second Amendment to an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Infor, Inc. to provide maintenance and support of workforce de time and attendance software to the Metropolitan Police Department. RS 2021-1100, resolution approving an application for a uh, Coverdell Forensic Science Improvement Grant for the U.S. Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government through the Police Department. RS 2021-1101. Taylor, Toombs, and Reese and Allen, a resolution accepting agreement for the Arts Commission uh, to create a Parks Nashville in conjunction with the Metro Government through the Parks and Recreation Department to provide big band dances at the Centennial Park Event Shelter. RS-2021-1103 by Cash, O'Connell, Taylor, and others. Resolution approving an interim government agreement between the State of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and the Metro Government through the Park Public Works Department for travel sig traffic signal communication upgrades along Broadway and West End from First Avenue to I-440. RS 2021-1105, Tombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to settle a personal injury claim of Donna Carruthers against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $19,000. RS 2021-1106 by Council Member Tombs, resolution authorizing the Met Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Lacondia Newsom against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $28,500. Uh, RS 2021-1108, Councilmember Toombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law, compromised and settled property damage claim of Vincent Dixie against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $15,087.48. RS 2021-1109, Henderson, Pulley, Mendes, and others, a resolution recognizing the achievements of Nashvillian and Olympian Alex Walsh. Uh, and RS 2021-1110 by Rosenberg, Mendes, and others. Resolution supporting the Metropolitan National Boards of Education decision to increase the likelihood of schools remaining open by requiring the wearing of masks in school buildings and on school buses. Uh, those are the items on the consent agenda. Does anything need to be bumped off? Yeah. Nope, oh, I'm sorry. Um, item 10, RS 2021-1093. Uh, will be bumped off the consent calendar. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else that needs to be bumped off? Okay. So 10 stays on? Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to get committee reports. Uh, affordable housing, Council Member Sawar, you're first. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Affordable housing considered RS 2021 1087, and we recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Toombs, you got budget. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to recommend approval, 740 against. 
Tavares 2021 1030, 1086, 1087, 1088. 1091, 1092, 1093, 1094, 1095, 1096, 1097, 1098, 1099, 1100, 1101, 1103, 1105, 1106, and 1108. Thank you, Councilmember Toombs. Councilmember Taylor, Health and Hospitals. Thank you, Mr. President. Health and Hospitals approved RS 2021, 1087, and 1088. Eight in favor, zero against. Also 1091, 1092, 1093, and 1094, seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Van Rees, uh, you got parks. Thank you very much. Um, parks, libraries, and arts uh, met on resolution 1111 uh, for the anniversary of the Frisk Museum, which by the way, I've been a member for all 20 years. Uh, voted in favor of four, uh, in favor, zero against, in 1101. Uh, four in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Murphy, you've got one, I believe. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I believe all that planning and zoning had was RS 2021-1103, and that passed 11 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Council Member Gamble, Public Safety. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Safety recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against, for 1096, 1099, and 1100 and recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against, for 1097 and 1098. All right, thank you. Council Member Nash, <laughs> Public Works. Public Works took up uh, RS 2021-1030 and recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. Okay. You got 1103. Three. <laughs> 1103, yes, we recommended uh, approval, uh, seven in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. And Council Member Johnston, take us home. Thank you. Um, we considered 2021, uh, 1109 and 1110. We voted five in favor, zero against, and with that, I'd move approval of the consent agenda. Got a motion to approve all items on the consent agenda. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? No, you adopt. Okay, let's go back and pick up the ones that were not on the consent agenda. <clears throat> uh, item number six, RS 2021-1089, uh, by Councilmember Sledge, Toombs, Murphy, and others. The resolution accepting a grant for the Metro Historical Commission Foundation to the Metro government through the Metro Historical Commission to assist with a portion of the costs associated with the site's master plan for Fort Nagley Park. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Can I get committee reports, please? You certainly can. Budget and Finance, Council Member Toombs. Budget and Finance voted to recommend a one meeting deferral, 740 again. All right, Planning and Zoning, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. We, uh, Planning and Zoning, voted to defer one meeting, and then we'd also like to make the motion to refer this to Parks. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was 10. I have 11 in favor, zero against. Uh, what about sending it to parks? You want to send it to parks? Was it 10 in favor, one against? I'm sorry, I've got mixed notes on that vote. Okay, well, let's make sure we got this right. I'm looking at uh, Councilmember Van Rees. Is this one that needs to go to parks? Okay, all right. Okay, just for the, per I think this was deferred by rule, but just for the sake of getting it to the right place. Uh, Councilmember Sledge, I'm going to come back to you uh, for a mo proper motion. Yes, thank you. I'd like to defer one meeting with a re-referral to all committees in addition to parks, all okay. relevant committees. All right, thank you. You've heard the motion properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. Okay. Uh, next item up is item number seven, RS 2021-1090. It's a resolution approving the employment contract for the Chief Medical Director of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County uh, by Councilmember Toombs. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Uh, I got um, health and hospitals. Councilmember Taylor. Thank you. It's uh, 1090. Are you on? I, I didn't know if I was on. Yeah, Thank you. You're on. Um, Health and Hospital and Social Services approved RS 2021-1097 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Personnel, Councilman Rutherford. Personnel did not meet due to lack of a quorum. Okay, all right, thank you. And back to you, Budget and Finance. Budget and Finance voted to recommend approval 740 against. Okay, uh, at least we've got committee reports in so we can proceed ahead. Uh, Councilmember Toombs. 
Thank move, you. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Discussion on uh, RS-2021-1090. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Post no, you adopt. Okay. Um, Uh, we're on item number 19, RS-2021-1102. This is by Alan Mendes, Hager, and uh, others. Resolution calling for the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure, the Greenways and Open Space Commission, and the Metro Legal Department to solicit community input, gather data from other cities regarding the authorization of electric <coughs> bicycles on Metro Greenways, request a moratorium on any council legislation related to electric bicycles on Greenways until the community input and data can be collected. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, Parks, uh, Council Member Van Rees. Um, yes, there was an amendment um, proposed on this, and mm -hmm. then there was a, an amendment to the amendment proposed in committee. Um, the results were uh, six in favor, two against, uh, as um, the amended amendment. Amended. Make sense? <laughs> okay. So let me make sure I got this right. All right. So you had an amendment that you took up in parks that also got an amendment. Correct. And then you did you put the amendments on? We to we, we put the the put the amendment on and voted a six in favor, two against. Okay, on the bill as amended. As the amended oh, the amendment. Is. Okay, yes. got it. All right. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I got it. Public works, council member Nash. Public Works did pass the amendment uh, 540 against. Uh, we did not have an amended amendment. And uh, we recommended the bill as amended for approval 740 against. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to Council Member Allen. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Okay. So we've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you. You want me to do my explanation now or after we talk about the amendment? Um, you can do the amendment first if you'd like to, or you can have an explanation and then we'll consider the amendment. Uh, let, me, let me start with the explanation if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Essentially what this bill does is request holding off on any legislation regarding electrical assisted bicycles on greenways until we can gather some data to guide any discussions that we have. Um, this bill requests that NDOT Greenways Commission and Metro Legal review data from peer cities and solicit community input um, with help also from Walk Bike Nashville and Greenways for Nashville and other community groups. The background for this is that um, Greenways have been wildly popular in Nashville. We have almost 100 miles of that. Um, they are used by pedestrians, runners, dog bikers, bi bicycles, and uh, other people out for exercise. There has been an increase in electrical assisted bicycles and we simply need to be more thoughtful about how to, how to treat those. There are there is tension between bicycles um, and pedestrians, whether that's uh, the fault of it being electrical or just of rude bike riders is part of the data that we need to gather. So we're simply asking that we um, not make any, any decisions at this point, but be very deliberate in a process to gather data um, and take into account some state and federal rules that already deal with that. Um, and there will be further discussion about uh, new e-bikes that are uh, possibly going to be located near greenways and whether we feel like that's appropriate or not. So with that, I would renew my motion for approval and welcome the discussion to follow. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the resolution 1102. It's been properly seconded. Councilmember Murphy, you're next. Thank you. Um, I want to make sure that I get this right. I have an amendment that I would like to move, but I also need to move the verbal amendment to that amendment that was Council Lady Henderson's in committee. So if you want to walk me through that, Hannah. So we don't do uh, amendments to amendments at the council. You can just offer a late amendment that's based on uh, the amended language from the Parks Committee. All right, then what I'd like to do is, um, I, I assume I need to do a rule suspension of that. So in explanation of that, what I, um, Council Lady Henderson offered some compromise uh, language to my amendment. And so do I need to explain that, Hannah, or do you want to take that over? Ms. Lightland. Yeah. 
I, I, wanna, say, I just want to make sure that, I guess, I'll go ahead and suspend the rules. Yeah, I think we're trying to make sure to we've got. Move to suspend the rules. And move I was to suspend say, the I rules. I think that so, I got the language, but I okay. was not in the end of the meeting. All right, so let's make sure we've got this right. So what we're doing is there's an amendment in the packet that's by Council Member Murphy to this resolution. What apparently has happened is that in the Parks Committee, there was a an amendment made to that amendment. Typically, we don't have that because we don't have anybody in there writing down the amendment. Um, in order to do that, you would have to have a, you would have to suspend the rules to get the the amendment to the amendment on. Um, but what I'm checking with Ms. Island is that, do we have the language of the amendment? So the language, and correct me if I'm wrong, was to um, basically, so it's making changes to two different recitals. The language that is stricken from both recitals is discussing e-bikes and it says, with no known incidents or problems. There was additional language changed in the second recital that was changing the sentence from saying, basically, whether it's appropriate to limit the use of e-bikes in Nashville beyond existing state law. That was changed to whether it's appropriate to limit the use of e-bikes in Metro parks as permitted under existing state law. That change is, is something that the Parks Committee did not agree with. And so the only change, and sorry for the confusing explanation, would be uh, striking with no known incidents or problems from two separate recitals in the resolution. All right, so do we have the proper, we've got the proper language before us. Okay, now, in order to get that before us, you would have to move to suspend the rules, okay? I, I'm sorry, I thought I, I moved to suspend the okay. rules. All right, just, we're just trying to get everything set. So Councilmember Murphy, uh, in order to get an amendment to an amendment in, that's in the packet, uh, Councilmember Murphy has moved to suspend the rules to consider that tonight. Uh, and it would have just come through. So my guess is you didn't go to the rules committee or did you? I was in rules, but I didn't think to bring it up because I forgot okay. that we needed to do rule suspension All for right. that. Is everybody clear where we are? In order to get an amendment to an amendment on tonight, uh, Councilmember Murphy has to move to suspend the rules. Is there objection to suspension of the rules? There is an objection, so that amendment cannot be considered. Okay. All right, then I will continue with my motion for uh, to move the amendment. Okay. So um, again, just to make sure everybody's clear, that amendment to the amendment cannot be considered. So we're now on Councilmember Murphy's amendment. Councilmember Murphy, explanation on your amendment. Thank you. So what this amendment does, I'm going to keep it um, as simple as possible. Uh, it strikes two parts of the whereases, which Hannah has already gone over, about talking about there are no known incidences or problems. The sponsor of the resolution has already said tonight that there is tension between Greenway users and bike users on the Greenway. What this amendment seeks to do is simply neutralize the, impl the implication that the whereas, se the whereas sections of this resolution presents. Why are we going to study e-bikes? on the greenways if we're gonna to conclude tonight that there are no known problems. How often do we pass resolutions or ask departments to study something if there's not a problem? I think this resolution to be good policy, even though it is just the whereas is, we need to clarify our intent here. Our intent here is to have a non-bias study um, and bring us back data, whether it has recommendations or not. Um, we need to have this resolution in its proper form. To get it in its proper form, we need to take out the assumption that there are no known problems or incidences out there. If you look at any Greenways Facebook page, Park page, or Ask Greenways, Friends of Greenways, so on and so forth, you'll find out and know that there are problems. There have been reported problems and there have been accidents and injuries from bikes, whether they were e-bikes or not. This uh, resolution just needs to clarify that we have not already come to that conclusion. Additionally, I think it's vitally important that we realize that this council and the Parks Department, the Greenways Commission, and now NDOT, it is the correct format for them to study uh, e-bikes on the Greenways. This morning I heard a radio ad bragging that Walk Bike Nashville and the Downtown Partnership were bringing e-bikes to our greenways, uh, I'm sorry, to our greenways uh, through Trek and through the, uh, I'm forgetting what they're called, B-cycles. And so I, I think that the problem here is, is that we already have organizations promoting these e-bikes, 
yet we're saying that there are no problems, we have no data, so on and so forth. All this resolution does is ask for that study, and all my amendment does is neutralize the language so we can have accurate, non-biased information given to us. All right, so Councilmember Murphy has moved uh, the amendment properly. Second, discussion on the amendment. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. So a little bit of background about this. Uh, the amendment's not a friendly amendment. Um, uh, Council Member Allen and I, uh, through the mayor's office and the council's office, worked out the agreement worked out the language by agreement, and th this is not a, a welcome amendment. Um, the background here is that for a number of years, the parks have asserted that, there's, that they have a rule that says no e-bikes on the greenways. For a number of years, e-bike users have known that that's not compliant with state law, and, and the city hasn't followed the state law as far as creating that regulation. By now, Metro Legal has said multiple times at meetings and in emails that the current parks rule is not effective, it's not enforceable, uh, class 1 e-bikes are allowed on the greenways. The only reason this is coming to a head now is because of the fleets of vehicles, uh, the b-cycles and the scooter companies may have e-bikes coming soon. That's the only reason this is coming to a head. The mayor's office convened a stakeholder meeting two Fridays ago, three Fridays ago, where there were about 20 people there from parks, greenways, walk bike Nashville, council member Allen, who's on the greenways commission, I believe, and Walk Bike Nashville asked that I be invited because I'm an e-bike user. At that meeting, all the stakeholders agreed that there should be a stand down and that we wouldn't engage in this sort of debate that we're doing right now, at least among the stakeholders, and that Council Member Allen and I, who have somewhat different perspectives on this, if we could work out language that we both agreed to that would create the study and urge a stand down on this while the study gets done, then, um, then that would be okay. So council member and Allen and I, through the proper channels, worked out the language. And this amendment takes out language um, that I asked to be in there. Um, so it's no longer an agreement between council member Allen and I with this amendment. The stakeholder group will lose me um, because this tends to push it toward the direction of assuming that there's gonna be some action taken by the council and there's some, some problem that should have to be fixed. Three quarters of the facts that Council Member Murphy mentioned, with all due respect, simply aren't right. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and this was an agreement of the stakeholder group by Council Member Allen and I, and mm -hmm. the amendment shouldn't go on, and if it does go on, then this should be deferred because it, it's not the result of the stakeholder meeting. Mr. Jameson will attest to the fact that the, the whole idea was to work out language that Council Member Allen and I agreed to and try to get it passed. If it doesn't pass, that's fine, but it's definitely not an agreement between Council Member Allen and I anymore. So I'd urge um, rejection of the amendment. If it passes, I'm gonna move to defer. I'm not sure whether I'll be on the right side of that, um, but that's what I'm gonna do, thanks. All right, thank you, Council Member Mendez. Uh, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of, of, of the amendment. Um, I, I, I do think this neutralizes the, the, the resolution. I'm an avid biker, as, as you know. I'm not anti-e-bike, but if there's something that we learned uh, um, last year, a couple years ago, or with, uh, with, with scooters, um, let's proceed cautiously. Let, let's be very objective. Uh, let's be very neutral. And so removing these six words is what makes this resolution neutral. We own the infrastructure, we paid for the infrastructure, we, we, we built it, and now we have another for-profit company coming in here saying we, we want to dump a bunch of e-bikes on, on your infrastructure. Well, that's okay. I'm not anti-e-bike, um, but let's do it in a very neutral way. And quite uh, all due respect, with the negotiation that happened between Councilmember Allen and Councilmember Mendez, Councilmember Mendez won. And so I, I really don't want it to set us up for a potential ordinance that we might pass that has a resolution that this council is going to support and say that, well, hey, we said there was no uh, known issues or whatnot. So let's remove that language and let's proceed together in, in an objective uh, uh, way. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up that I'm happy to share with, with fellow members um, emails and Facebook posts that I have printed out citing issues that have come up, but really that's not what my amendment is about. My amendment is about making this a neutral piece of legislation 
where it doesn't say that there are problems, doesn't say they're not problems. It says, let's go find out what the situation is. Let's see what's going out on our greenways. We need metro departments to decide what is going on in our greenways. Right now, we've got the downtown partnership and Walk Bike Nashville promoting and putting e-bikes onto our greenways without the Greenway Commission discussing it, which um, our fellow council member said that they're gonna discuss that tomorrow. Um, we need to have that discussion and that data presented to us. We don't need third party um, organizations who are benefiting from this to make the decisions for us. So I hope you will support me with this amendment. I hope that you will support good policy and good legislation with this amendment. I think that it is imperative that our legislative intent here is neutralized and that we take out these two portions. Um, and if you know a fellow council member feels like they can't be a part of a stakeholder group because they didn't get their way on an amendment, then you know that's that's something else to consider, but not when deciding whether we need to make good policy or not. So tonight, let's neutralize this and make sure that our legislative intent is clean and take out any bias that was put in. Thank you, Councilor Murphy. Uh, Councilor Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I guess my, my question is more on the resolution itself. I was gonna ask Hannah, just when we get to it, the current state of the state law and what we have to do with this council to override or do something to change that state law, just for people watching and for me so I can be clear on where we are on this. Thank you. So let me ask you this. Do you wanna know now, because we're still uh, on the We amendment. can wait till after the amendment. That'd be fine, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll come back to you after the amendment. I've got uh, Council Member Nash. I guess maybe I'm a new council member that doesn't understand the rule. I, I didn't know that if a couple of councilmen agreed on a bill, that no one else could come along and make an amendment. And frankly, I don't see this as an unfriendly amendment. It, it just kind of helps neutralize the, uh, the language. Um, yeah, I'm just confused. Maybe, I don't know. Thank you, Councilman Nash, sure. I think. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to quickly note, you know, it, it sounds like some of the anxiety that members of this body have around e-bikes um, is, is maybe more not so much about the technology itself as it is the potential impacts of these um, third-party operators. Um, when we say, are there known issues or are there not known issues? Um, it, it seems like a lot of this is, is just really anxiety about what might happen again with like what we saw with scooters where they became um, very littered throughout the public right-of-way and whatnot. But I would like to sort of, if we can separate that conversation from e-bikes themselves, um, you know, uh, the e-bikes that are in Nashville for the most part are privately owned e-bikes that individuals use with, um, I don't want to say, <laughs> I'm going to say with, with no known issues. Um, and... <laughs> And I know that there are known knowns and there are known unknowns and there are knowns that we, no, I'm not gonna get into that, I apologize. Um, but that, I just wanted to make sure that we make that distinction between the issues that could be caused by these operators dropping dockless bikes around or whatever that ends up looking like and, and not overreach into you know, privately owned e-bikes, which is, is sort of where they, um, where they are in Nashville right now. So thank you for that. Thank you for that known unknown statements. Um, <laughs> all right, anybody else wishes to be heard on this? That's it. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Okay, let me tell you where we are. Uh, we are on Council Member Murphy's amendment to the resolution, RS 2021-1102. was properly seconded, and you've heard discussion on it. Uh, we are ready to vote. We'll try voice vote first. All those in favor of the amendment by Council Member Murphy say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. And there's no way I can tell. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, um, we are um, voting on the amendment. This is Councilmember Murphy's amendment to RS 2021-1102. Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready. Yes, Vice Mayor. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, open up the machines. You're voting on the amendment, not on the resolution. You're voting on amendment number one to RS 2021-1102. If you're for the amendment, you'll vote aye. If you're against it, you'll vote no.
Councilmember Glover is uh, having trouble. He's good now. Yeah, okay. Anybody having trouble? Everybody good? Everyone has voted, Vice Mayor. Everybody has voted. Madam Clerk, close machines, take the vote. 18 votes in favor, 17 against, two abstentions. So it's 18 in favor, 17 against. Uh, the amendment passes. Okay, so um, um, there she is. Uh, Councilmember Allen, uh, you are now on your resolution as amended. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval as amended. Okay. So Councilmember Allen has moved approval of RS 2021-1102 as amended, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the amendment? Councilor Mendez, you recognized. I move to defer two meetings. The language of the amendment showed up in the package yesterday, uh, as it usually does. And obviously there's, um, uh, it was one vote away from, uh, well, it was, it was a very close vote. Um, so I would move to defer uh, for two meetings to find out whether we can get back to something that um, both uh, the stakeholder group and council members um, can get behind. All right, so uh, Councilor Mendez has moved to defer two meetings that's properly seconded. Councilor Roten, I know you, uh, if I can get to you, I will, but the deferral motion takes precedence. Uh, so we are on the deferral motion. Uh, Councilor Murphy, you're recognized on the deferral motion. Thank you. Um, I would, I'll defer to the primary sponsor for this, but I, it was discussed in committee uh, that a deferral motion is not in the best interest of Greenway users, of e-bike users, of non-e-bike users, of, of the city of Nashville. Um, I think that the stakeholders are, are they've come together. Well, this resolution was drafted in its final form after the stakeholder meeting was met. Uh, or came together. I think that we can't wait. I think we need to continue and start gathering this data. We all know that we're going to have a beautiful fall. Hopefully the rain will hold off. But uh, if we continue to push this off, it will get into winter and we won't get accurate data. And so I'm going to ask you all not to defer this resolution tonight. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, before I move away from you, did you want a response from Councilmember Allen? That's what I couldn't understand. Uh, I said that I would defer to her. I assume that she can speak to herself for herself. She can. Well, I didn't. I did not name her, so she's, she's welcome in the to queue, do. She's but um, yeah. Okay. But either, can, either way. But your name was called, and that's why I was trying to figure I, out. I, I, was. I was careful not to. I'm sorry if I did. Uh, I'm going to recognize Councilmember Allen because it sounds like you were referring, and I think it's a proper way to do it. Councilmember Allen, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would prefer not to defer. I, I, I would love to have everyone's support on this, and I'm a, a little frustrated that, that uh, parsing words is causing division, but I do believe that the goal of this is to give us the opportunity to gather data um, through community engagement and through um, best practices, review of, of our peer cities, and community engagement takes time. Uh, and I think the, the sooner we start that, the faster we can get the data that we need to do this. So I would, I would request that we uh, go ahead and move that. All this does is, is, is ask us not to pass any legislation until we have good data. So I'm not sure that a deferral gives us more time to get good data. All right. Uh, Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Previous question. Councilmember Sledge has moved the previous question. Councilmember wrote, and I'll never get to you. Sorry. Uh, Councilmember Sledge has moved the previous question. Uh, we're not voting on the resolution. We're just simply voting on whether we're going to vote. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay. So previous question prevails. We are voting on the deferral motion not on the resolution. We're simply voting on the deferral motion. So uh, the motion currently before this body is to defer this resolution to meetings. If you're for the deferral, you'll vote yes. If you're opposed, you vote no. Let's do it by voice vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. No. All right, Madam Clerk. Uh, we're on uh, the board on uh, the motion to defer. This is a motion to defer two meetings. Okay, Vice Mayor. All right, uh, board is ready. Go ahead and open up the machines. Can remember, you're voting on a deferral motion. If you want to defer, vote yes. If you don't want to defer, you'll vote no.
All votes are in, Vice Mayor. All votes are in? Yes. Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. 16 votes in favor, 21 against. All right, so the motion to defer fails, 16 in favor, 21 against. So um, we're back to Council Member Allen's uh, motion to approve RS 2020 of 1102 as amended. The motion is to approve. Before I do anything, Council Member Roten, you're recognized. <laughs> <laughs> Thank don't, you, Mr. Don't Weissman. Don't tell me because I'll close you off. I know. That's what I was worried about. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I was, was going to ask Hannah just for the w people watching at home. I know the answer to this question, so it's kind of a dumb question for me. <laughs> Hannah, could you please just explain what the current state law is about e-bikes on greenways and what we have to do to change what the state law says? Thank sure. you. Certainly. So state law defines three classes of e-bikes, class one, class two, and class three. Currently class one and class two e-bikes are allowed to operate on paths and trails uh, unless they have been regulated or prohibited by the local government. And the state law also requires certain uh, elements in, in the legislation to prohibit class one and class two e-bikes, including the definitions of class two, class one, class two, and class three e-bikes. So the Metro Legal Department has determined that uh, the current restrictions on motorized vehicles would not apply to e-bikes under this state law on greenways. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilmember Roten, my pleasure. All right, any, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I was just wondering if we could get Mr. Roten to explain the law to us tonight. <laughs> Uh, Councilmember Roten? Mr. Vice Mayor, I don't think I could explain anything that Councilmember O'Connell would understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, pursuant to the rules, Councilmember O'Connell can uh, respond. <laughs> Councilmember O'Connell? Uh, thank you. I'd, I'm happy to take it outside with the gentleman from District. Is that 15? I think it's 15 he's in. Is that? I think you got the wrong district, all right? All right, we are ready to vote. Uh, the, the motion is to approve RS 2021-1102 as amended. Uh, nobody else in the queue? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no? Okay, so it's a resolution, so I think we have to go on the board. I'm not sure if I can count everybody who said no. That's a good idea. Okay, so um, we have to go on the board because it's a resolution. Madam Clerk, uh, if you would. Um, tell me when you're ready. We're voting on RS 2021-1102 as amended. Yes, sir. All right. We are ready. Uh, open up the machines. Everybody in? Uh, no, Vice Mayor, still a couple. I'm going to say that this one's in. Yes, yeah. All votes are in, Vice Mayor. Everybody in? Close machines. Take the vote. 27 uh, motion in passes. Favor. 27 in favor. Eight against. Three, uh, two abstentions and three are absent. So um, resolution RS 2021-1102, as amended, passes. All right. Uh, next uh, resolution is item number 21, RS 2021-1104, by Councilmember O'Connell, Taylor Murphy, and others, a resolution approving an intergovernment agreement by, between the state of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and the Metropolitan Government, acting through Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure for the Charlotte Avenue, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Boulevard Transit Headways and Congestion Management Project. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, budget and finance, Councilmember Toombs. Uh, we are on uh, item number 21. Budget and finance voted to recommend approval 740 against. All right, thank you. Councilmember Murphy, planning and zoning. 
We voted, uh, planning and zoning voted to defer one meeting, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Public Works, Councilor Nash. Public Works also uh, recommended a one meeting deferral, nine in favor, zero against. Councilor O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to move to defer one meeting with a brief comment. All right, motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this one, we had a request for additional information. Uh, there was confirmation from NDOT that a one meeting deferral would not jeopardize the grant application. So uh, the committee in question uh, was comfortable with the one meeting deferral and I would renew my motion. Okay. Uh, Council Member uh, O'Connell has uh, renewed his motion to defer one meeting. Uh, again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, motion is a pass to defer one meeting. Uh, next item, item number 24, R is 2021-1107 by Council Member Toombs. Resolution authorizing the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Kristen Jenkins against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $8,037.27. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm withdrawing this one. Okay. Uh, this bill, this resolution is withdrawn. Okay. <laughs> And uh, the last one we've got on the uh, regular items on resolutions, RS 2021-1111 by Council Member Stiles, Warren, and others. Resolution celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Frist Art Museum. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Council Member O'Connell also wanted to speak, so I, I, I will be brief. <clears throat> This resolution is very important because the Frist has been providing amazing exhibits for the city of Nashville for 20 years and multicultural exhibits. We have had the North Nashville murals as well as Picasso and Frida Kahlo. And so this is a wonderful opportunity to acknowledge the rich arts community that they have helped to cultivate in the city of Nashville. So I'd appreciate it if all of my colleagues would vote yes. All right, um, Council Member Stiles, oh, we uh, have reports. to have a committee report. I just got it. I got it right before you told me. <laughs> committee uh, reports. Council Member Johnston, <laughs> Rules Committee. Thank you. Yes, we voted five in favor, zero against. All right. And then, Council Member Stiles, we actually need a motion to approve. I'd like to move to approve this resolution. All right, so we got a motion to approve RS 2021-1111, properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move to defer one meeting with a brief comment. All right. So Council Member O'Connell has moved to defer properly. Seconded back to you. Thank you. Uh, we began tonight's meeting with an important call to unity, and I know this has been a tough term, right? We all came into office with a fiscal crisis requiring a corrective plan of action, moved swiftly into a year filled with tornado, uh, wind storms, this building being set on fire. Uh, Second Avenue being bombed, all against the backdrop of COVID-19, which continues today. And I think it's made this term um, somewhat difficult for us in terms of building relationships. Uh, and that includes on the stuff that maybe seems less controversial, right? We, had a, we just had a, a tense uh, policy discussion, but on these items where we can be collegial, I think we should. As I was reviewing this agenda, I was surprised to find this resolution and I would encourage colleagues, uh, when looking at the important figures, the cultural assets and districts, work with the council member that represents those areas. They might know someone. In this case, I'm deferring for one meeting because first leadership had not actually had an opportunity to review this resolution and had some suggested edits. So I do want to give them the space to review that. Uh, they have an outgoing director, uh, and it, I've been looking for ways to appropriately honor her as well. And I think this speaks to how much relationships matter uh, within a district. I think it speaks to opportunities to teach. If you know something about someone, if you know something about an institution, invite a colleague to learn more about that, especially if it is in their district. Um, so in this case, I hope colleagues will support me on a one meeting deferral so we can get this recognized in a way that uh, the first has actually approved. And I will look forward to bringing it back then. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, the motion is to defer one meeting. Again, it's properly seconded. Anybody else in the queue? Seeing none, we're on a motion to defer. All those in favor of the motion to defer say aye. Aye. Opposed, Opposed no. Uh, Councilmember Stiles, the vote's already been taken. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at you, Councilmember Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I actually had hit the button three times and it, it didn't take when you were asking for people to speak. So sorry about that, but I'm more than happy 
Well, to so uh, Councilmember Stiles, you're not on the machine here. Um, I checked it three times, and um, the vote's already been taken, so the motion is to defer one meeting. Okay. All right, so we're moving on. Um, this is late resolutions, RS 2021. Uh, somebody wish to be recognized? Okay. Uh, late resolutions, uh, RS 2021. Uh, there's not a number for this because it's a late resolution. Uh, Council Member Toombs, resolution accepting a shuttered venue operator's grant from the U.S. Small Business Administration to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Municipal Auditorium for emergency assistance for venues affected by COVID-19. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to suspend the rules. All right. So, uh, Council Member Toombs, because this is a late resolution, needs to suspend the rules. Council Member Johnston, Rules Committee. We had no objection. Okay. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report, which is mine. Uh, let's get let's get the um, suspension of the rules. Oh, so sorry. in order to get it before us, we just need to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension of the rules on this uh, late filed resolution? Seeing none, uh, rules are suspended. Councilmember Toombs, you're on your late filed resolution. I have a uh, committee report. All right. So budget and finance, I think it's Bu yours. Budget and finance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Budget and finance voted to recommend approval 740 against. All right. Uh, so Council, uh, Council Member Toombs gave you the budget report. Back to you for a motion on your late file resolution. Move for approval. Uh, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval on the first late file resolution. Council Member Hurt, uh, properly seconded. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Can the uh, sponsor just... Um, define uh, the venues, uh, was it limited to, or to, is it open for anyone? Um, I don't know if the council member too, again, or, or but, legal, whomever. But I think I'm looking at the administration. Administration, can you do that, I Mr. Jameson? this is only for municipal auditorium. Mm -hmm. Ms. Um, Mayor Joe Wiggins, you recognize. Thank you. The shuttered venue operator grant was administered by the Small Business Association. It was available for um, a, a variety of venues, whether it was a, a music um, venue, um, there were certain um, bars and restaurants that were eligible. It was administered through the SBA. Municipal Auditorium applied as an eligible agency and was awarded this grant. So this, these funds are just for municipal based on their lost revenues. Uh, 1.5 million. Uh, 1 mil 1 million 523,618. Councilmember Hart? Yeah, how was this publicized? I, I don't recall hearing anything about it. But uh, it was available. The, um, this round of funding came in the December 27th, 2020 stimulus package. Um, it was. It was shared, uh, I mean, there were press releases, it was shared around town, it was on the news. I mean, specifically with Shuttered, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm confused. If this is, if it was around that same package where other small businesses were eligible, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm confused about it. It's different than just um, regular small business. It was just administered by the small business administration. That was just to administer the funds. The funds never came directly to Metro. It was a national, you know, application process through the SBA as part of the second stimulus package. So we had the CARES package, then we had the December 27th, 2020 stimulus package, and then the American Rescue Plan. This was that in-between stimulus package. Councilmember Hart. Uh, Councilmember Mendez. I just because I'm sitting right next to both folks, I, I think I have a sense of the uh, miscommunication. Th this is a fully federal program. It's got nothing to do with Metro. Uh, Metro is just an applicant through for the um, municipal auditorium. It's I think it was something like $15 billion worth of federal money was available if you met certain criteria and, and venues all across America applied for the program and were awarded grants. And so the name Shuttered Venue Operators Grant is the name in the federal legislation. And so my sense is 
the municipal auditorium and Metro applied for this grant probably four or five months ago, and they're swinging by the council to get approval for the application because the money's been awarded by the federal government. Okay. Ms. Wiggins, anything? No, that was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Councilor Hart, I'm coming back to you. Anything? All right. Uh, Councilor Toombs has moved approval of this. Um, properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right. Uh, the, the second late file resolution is by Councilmember Stiles, RS 2021, again unnumbered. It's a resolution urging the Metropolitan Public Health Department Chief Medical Director to require masks be worn by all individuals in public indoor spaces. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Yes, committee reports, please. Can you hear me? Committee reports, please. So, uh, Councilmember Stiles, in order to get those, you have to move to suspend the rules. Can I move to suspend the rules, please? All right. So, uh, Councilmember Stiles, in order to get this before us tonight on the resolution, um, the rules have to be suspended. She's moving to suspend the rules. Uh, Councilmember Johnston, to you first. We did have objection in the rules committee to the suspension of the rules. Okay. Uh, on the floor, is there objection to suspension of the rules for uh, to hear this tonight? There is more than two hands, so um, rules are not suspended. Uh, this measure cannot be heard tonight. Okay, it'll go on to the agenda for the next meeting. September seventh. Uh, September, September seventh. Uh, you'll have to file it, but it uh, so it doesn't automatically go on. It'll have to be filed. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Uh, we are now on uh, bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with you all, but there were only two bills on introduction and first reading. So do any of those two bills need to come off of um, first reading? Seeing none, could I have a motion to approve both of these and to say a pr proper motion? Properly second. All in favor of the bills on introduction and first reading say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Uh, those bills on introduction and first reading pass. Uh, we do have a late bill. This is also by Council Member Stiles. Uh, ordinances to require masks be worn by all individuals in public spaces as further uh, described in the bill. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized on your late filed bill. Uh, yes, Vice Mayor, I guess. Uh, can you hear me? Still can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Better? Thank you. Um, I did defer this, so what's the, how, how, what I need to do, I think. Yeah, it's uh, you can't you can't defer this. I'm sorry, I, the other one. Sorry, the resolution. That one's deferred. Sorry. So, um, in order to get this before on first reading, you'd have to move to suspend the rules. Okay, move to suspend the rules, please. All right. So, Councilmember Stiles, on her late file bill, has moved to suspend the rules. Councilmember Johnston, rules. Yes, we did have objection to the suspension of the rules on this late filed ordinance. Okay. On the floor, suspension uh, of the rules. She has moved to suspend the rules. Is there objection? There is objection. I see more than two hands. Uh, so um, this bill will not be heard tonight. Again, according to the clerk, you will have to refile to get it on the agenda for September 7th. Is that right, right Madam Clerk? Okay. All right. So uh, that bill is not heard tonight either. We are now on bills on second reading. Uh, there is a consent agenda. We go through this. The first item on consent is uh, item number 35, Bill 2021-795 is on consent. 845, that's item 38, is on consent. 846 is on consent. 848 is on consent. 850 is on consent, 851 is on consent, 852 is on consent. Those are the items on the consent calendar. Let me run through this again, again, the, again 795, 845, 846, 848, 850, 851, and 852. Does anything need to be bumped off of the consent calendar? All right, uh, here we go. These are the items on consent calendar. Item number 35, uh, Bill 2021-795 by Porterfield, an ordinance to amend section. 
nine. It's off of consent. Right. Yeah, you'll need to move to defer to a meeting. Sorry. That's no, okay. No Bill 2021-795 by Councilmember Porterfield. Ordinance to amend section 16.24.330 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to intermodal containers on residential property. Uh, item number th 30... Eight, BL 2021-845 by Syracuse, Tombs, and Nash. Ordinance approving the third amendment to an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and HDR Engineering. Uh, BL 2021-846 by Taylor, Murphy, Nash, and O'Connell. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning a portion of Booker Street right of way in Eastman along the south property line of 745 23rd North Court. Um, BL 2021-848 by Cash Murphy, Nash, and O'Connell. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of 14th Avenue Street and alley number 393 right of way in Eastman between Wedgwood Avenue and Ackland Avenue. BL 2021-850, Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes in Eastman's three, three properties located at 7150, 7, 7154 Nolansville Road and Nolansville Road unnumbered. BL 2021-851, Styles Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new sub-public sanitary water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes in Eastman. Property located at Hobson Pike unnumbered, also known as Hobson Pike Townhouses. Townhomes Phase 1, and BL 2021-852, Styles Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for property located at Hobson Pike, unnumbered, also known as Hobson Pike Townhomes Phase 2. Those are the items on consent. Anything needs to become off? All right. <clears throat> We've got committee reports, budget and finance. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Budget and Finance voted to recommend approval of Bill 2021-845-740 um, against. All right, uh, Council Member Cash, uh, codes. Uh, on 2021-795, we voted to approve 640 against. Okay. Uh, Council Member Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Uh, planning and Zoning on 846 was 11 in favor, zero against. Did you say 847? Uh, no. No, okay. So Next I wasn't. one is 848. Okay, 848, we're 11 in favor, zero against. 849, 11 in favor, zero against. Okay. Same with 850, 851. Okay, good. There were a few that I missed, I'm sorry. 852. 852. They were all 11 in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Nash, Public Works. Public Works took up 2021, 840, 845, 846, 848. 850, 851, and 852, all were recommended for approval, 7, 4, and 0 against. Okay. Uh, and traffic and parking, Councilmember O'Connell. Here he comes. My apologies. We were uh, all... Uh, Eight, 846 and 840. Yeah, we had, uh, we were four in favor, zero against. Okay. And then uh, give me a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve those items on the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay, now let's go back and pick up the items on um, bills on second reading. Uh, the first one is BL 202582 uh, by Johnston, Pulley, Nash, and others. Ordinance amending sections 13.08.080 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to the use of license plate scanner LPR technology in the public rights of way. Um, Councilmember Johnston, you are recognized. Thank you. This bill has to be um, procedurally has to be deferred one meeting, so I don't even think I have to make the motion. No, it's an automatic deferral of one meeting. All right, so it'll show up at the next calendar. Uh, BL 2021, 654 and 655. Uh, these are Councilman Rosenberg's bill. Uh, Councilman Mendes has to abstain on these two. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RM2 to RS40, parking located at 6000 River Valley Drive, southeast corner of River Valley Drive and Newsom Station Road, all located within a planned unit development overlay in 655. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a portion of the Riverwalk Plan Unit Development District located at 6000 River Valley Drive at the southeast corner of River Valley Drive and Newsom Stations Road. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee report, please. Planning and zoning. Councilmember Murphy. I know you're all really shocked to hear this, 
but we deferred at one meeting. 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm gonna switch things up and move to defer one meeting, please. All right, so uh, that's different. Move to defer one meeting on both these bills, 654, 655. Again, Councilmember Mendes uh, abstains. All those in favor of the deferral say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both these bills are deferred one meeting. Uh, BL 2021-793 by Councilmember Withers. Ordinance amending section 13.08.03 of the Metropolitan Code with respect to liability insurance coverage requirements in connection with certain public rights of way encroachment. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I know we already have committee uh, reports on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to move for a one meeting deferral with a brief message. Okay, uh, the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, uh, when I initially had requested the deferral, I wanted to give some time to have a virtual community meeting for this legislation, which does um, apply to a lot of neighborhood associations or HOAs or things like that for signage, as well as Metro beautification projects and the Metro right of way. Um, in working with Director Whitelaw, um, we wanted to allow a, a, a adequate time for that community meeting, and it's actually been uh, scheduled for next Wednesday, uh, the 25th of August at 6.30 p.m. The uh, nonprofit organization Neighbor to Neighbor is going to be facilitating that discussion uh, with neighbors, myself, and Director Whitelaw, and hope that uh, any council members or your neighborhood associations or HOAs will join that just to uh, make sure that groups understand how the law applies and if, if you have any questions or concerns that we might need to include in any amendments when this comes back for a second reading. So I uh, renew my motion for a one meeting deferral and look forward to seeing folks next Wednesday. All right. Uh, Council Member Withers has moved to defer this bill one meeting. It's properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the, the measure is deferred one meeting. Next measure is Bill 2021-835 by Councilmember Hall, Evans, Hager, and others. Ordinance on requiring the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services to study sewer infrastructure in Nashville and Davidson County to provide a report to the Metropolitan Council by July 1st, 2023. Councilmember Hall, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we're going to defer this one more meeting, so I need to do a motion to uh, defer one meeting, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Public Works oh, uh, committee, committee report. report. I'm sorry. That's okay. Council Member Nash, you recognized. Public Works uh, agreed for uh, to recommend deferral one meeting. Nine All right. four zero against. And back to you, Council Member Hall. Yes, sir. We're we're still having some conversations with the administration where we're getting everything worked out in terms of the details of this, and so we're going to defer one more meeting so that I can meet with them um, later on in the week and then we'll be ready to go next time. All right, motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded, any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion of one meeting say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill is deferred one meeting. Uh, item number 37, Councilman Rosenberg, Mendes, Suara, and others. Ordinance amending section 13.08.080 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to the use of license plate scanner LPR technology in the public rights of way. Uh, Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. All right. Uh, public safety, Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public safety recommended a deferral for one meeting, six in favor, two against. Okay. And uh, Public Works, Council Member Nash. Uh, Public Works uh, approved an amendment, uh, nine in favor, zero against, and uh, also uh, recommend a deferral of one meeting, nine in favor, zero against. Okay. Is that an automatic deferral? Uh, Council Member Rosenberg, I think it's an automatic deferral, but I'm just checking. Okay, so it's automatically deferred one meeting, all right? All right. Um, Next item on second reading, Bill 2021-847 by Council Member Van Rees, Murphy, Nash, and O'Connell. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, banding Baxter Street right of way between Hart Lane and Home Road. Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Uh, committee reports, please. Uh, you've got planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. Council Member Murphy. So Bill 2021-847, item number 40. 11 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Public Works, Councilor Nash. Public Works uh, recommended approvals, seven in favor, zero against. Okay, traffic and parking, Councilmember O'Connell. 
We were four in favor, zero against. Okay. Back to you, Councilmember Van Rees, and I think this is going to require something special. Yes. Right. Um, uh, this also was sent to uh, the Rules Committee, and I believe I need a suspension of the Johnson, rules. because she's going to have to suspend the rules to get something taken care of. Did this come before the Rules Committee? It did, and we had no objection. Okay. Councilmember uh, Van Rees, with the help of uh, Ms. Seitlin, can you explain what you have to do to sus what you're doing to suspend the rule? Absolutely. There, um, there are only uh, three property owners along this. Um, really, what's been used as an alleyway behind um, the Family Dollar, and um, the all of the property owners received notice and had no objection. But getting a signature uh, from Family Dollar uh, proved to be very difficult, and so. Not having signatures, I needed to suspend the rule to make sure that it happens. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Ms. Seitlin? Rule 17 requires the signature of abutting property owners for uh, for abandonments of this type. So it requires a rule suspension since she did not get signatures. Uh, the rule suspension is just to allow her to keep going because she didn't get the signature. Correct. Okay. So again, you've heard the explanation. Uh, Council Member uh, Van Reese is moving to suspend the rules to be able to proceed with the bill because not everybody signed on. Uh, to the documentation that was that's usually required. Uh, that's the request for suspension of the rule. Is there any problems with suspension of the rules? Any objections? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember Van Reese, you can proceed. Uh, thank you. With that, um, just um, for people who are trying to figure out where this is, um, there because Baxter Street does have two separate Baxter Streets. Wanted to be clear uh, to anyone who might uh, be confused by that. This is Baxter Street from Hart to Home Road. Uh, which is a, an area that's been used mainly as an alley up to this point and not actually a road. So with that, I move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, you adopt. Thank you, Council Member Van Rees. I think we got one more bill on second reading. It's BL 2021-849 by Sledge Murphy Nash and O'Connell. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, banning a portion of alley number 403 right away from 8th Avenue source to alley number 404. Council Member Sledge, you are rec recognized. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm going to have to defer those two meetings because it didn't go before the Traffic and Parking Commission. Do you need me to get committee reports before that? Yeah, go ahead and get yeah, we knew that it was going to be deferred two minutes, but let's go ahead and get the reports. So uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. We voted 11 in favor, zero against uh, to, to pass it. Defer. Okay. Uh, Councilmember. Actually approved. No, we, oh, you we approved. passed it. I don't, I didn't, none of us caught that it hadn't gone through traffic okay. parking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Councilmember Nash, uh, Public Works. Yeah, we also recommended approval, uh, seven in favor, zero against. Okay. And traffic and parking, Councilmember O'Connell? Four in favor, zero against. Okay, so you've got all the approvals in. You just got to defer the two meetings waiting. Okay. All right, um, so Councilmember Sledge, back to you. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd move to defer two meetings, please. Okay. Motion is to defer two meetings properly. Second, had any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill is deferred to meeting. So that gets us, that gets us through second reading. Uh, okay, we have bills on third reading. There's a bunch of bills, but there's a bunch of them on consent. So I'm gonna go through these. Um, starting on the first bill, item 46. Bill 2021-722 is on consent. Uh, item 48, BL 2021-776 is on consent. 779 is on consent. 789, which is item 51, is on consent. 790 is on consent. 794 is on consent. 796 is on consent. 808 is on consent. 812 is on consent. 814 is on consent. 816 is on consent. 818 is on consent. 819 is on consent. 820 is on consent. 821 is on consent. 
822 is on consent. 823 on consent, 824 on consent, 825 on consent, 826 on consent, 828 on consent, 829 on consent, 8, <coughs> bless you, 830 is on consent, 833 on consent, 834 on consent, 836 on consent, 837 on consent, 838 on consent, and 839 is on consent. <clears throat> uh, anything needs to be bumped off of there? That's a lot of bills. <clears throat> okay, listen carefully. Um, if you go through something that needs to be bumped, just remind me at the end. Um, here are the bills on consent, Bill 2021-722, it's item number 46 by Hall, Murphy, and Bradford. Uh, this is an ordinance amending section 17.40.060 uh, to allow district members of the Metropolitan Council to initiate applications to amend the official zoning map of property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Amending section 2.24.190 of the Metropolitan Code require the Director of Public Property Administration to provide an annual property inventory report to the Metropolitan Council. Next one is item 48, BL 2021-776 by Gamble, ordinance to amend title 17, changing from RS20 to R20 zoning for property located at 1111 Westchester Drive. BL 2021-779 by Councilmember Welsh, ordinance to amend title 17 by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning on properties located at 2700, 2703A, 2705A, 2704, 2706, 2707, 2709, 2711, and 2713 Fannie William Street, it's approximately 400 feet south of Whitsitt Road. It's 1.51 acres. Uh, BL 2021-789, that's item 51, by Councilmember Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from SP to SP zoning for property located at 217 Cleveland Street. Uh, item 52, BL 2021-790 by Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS5 to RM20 ANS zoning. Property located at 141 Elmhurst Avenue. It's approximately 280 feet south of Fern Avenue. 0.18 acres, BL 2021-794, item 53. By Council Member Nash, ordinance amending Metropolitan Code of Law, section 15.44.050, waters diverted from public sewage by deleting subsection E green roofs. BL 2021-796, that's item 54 by Council Member Murphy. Ordinance amending section 17.12.020 and 17.40.340 of the Metropolitan Code to modify the maximum height permitted in RMM excuse me, RM9A and RM15A zoning district to amend the standards that may be varied and to make housekeeping amendments pertaining to a certain table at 17.12.020D. Uh, BL 2021-808, that's item 56 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 7.5 to RM20 ANS zoning. Property located at 473 and 475 Timmins Street, southeast corner of Timmins Street and Mead Avenue, it's 0.48 acres. Uh, next item is item number 59, BL 2021-812 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IWD to MUGA zoning. Property is located at 504, 508, 510, 512, 514, 518, and 520 Thompson Lane, 2807 Grandview Avenue, northwest corner of Grandview Avenue and Thompson Lane. Uh, BL 2021-814, that's item 61 by Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing R10 to RM15 AN of zoning. Property is located at 404 Old Hickory Boulevard and Old Hickory Boulevard unnumbered. Northeast corner of Walker Street and Old Hickory Boulevard, it's 0.70 acres. BL 2021-816 by Council Member Wells. That's item 63, an ordinance to amend title, uh, title 17 by change from RS 7.5 to R88 zoning. Property is located at 460, 464, 468 Radnor Street, approximately 170 feet west of Nolensville Pike. Uh, item 65, BL 2021-818. Uh, Council Member Syracuse, uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R8 to ORI zoning. Properties located at 610, 628, 634, and 640 um, Ermac Drive, approximately 330 feet south of Sims Branch Way, 3.62 acres. Items number 66, BL 2021 819 by Council Member Syracuse, another one on Ermac Drive. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a portion of a plan unit development overlay district. Property is located at 646, 700, 704, 706, 708, and 712 Ermac Drive, zoned ORI. BL 2021 820 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by uh, amending that 111 North 1st Street specific plan to include property located at 151 North 1st Street. Approximately 900 feet north of James Robinson Parkway Zone I IR to increase the specific land boundary to a total of 
acres for mixed use development. Uh, BL 2021 821 by Council Members Hager and Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R10 to RS10, zoning for various properties located north of Highland View Drive, from Juno Drive to Baton Rouge Drive, northwest to Trenton Drive, and eastward to Concord Drive, it's under 11 acres. BL 2021-822, Hager and Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying contextual overlay district for various properties located north of Highland View Drive, from Juno Drive to Baton Rouge Drive, northward to Trenton Drive, and eastward to Concord Drive. BL 2021-823 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IR to SP zoning for property located at 1227 3rd Avenue North, southwest corner of Monroe Street and 3rd Avenue North, it's 0.62 acres. BL 2021-824 by Council Member Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RA to SP zoning for properties located at 4033, 4039, 4085 Central Pike and Central Pike a number at the northwest corner of Tulip Grove and Central Pike is 23.43 acres. BL 2021-825 by Council Member Porterfield. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS, uh, excuse me, from R20 to SP zoning for properties located at 2871 Ned Shelton Road, approximately 8, 635 feet south of Bell Road is 18.0 acres. BL 2021-825 26 by Council Member Hancock. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from OG to MUL zoning for properties located at 321 Larkin Springs Road and 601 Medical Park Drive, southeast corner of Manzano Road and Larkin Springs Road. It's 5.26 acres. <coughs> Uh, BL 2021 828 by Council Members Cash and Sledge, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the Hillsborough Village Urban Design Overlay District for various prop properties located on 19th Avenue South, 20th Avenue South, 21st Avenue South, Ackland Avenue, Belcourt Avenue, Blakemore Avenue, Fairfax Avenue, Magnolia Boulevard, and Wedgwood Avenue is 26.91 acres. To clarify where ground level parking shall be lined with office for commercial uses on select street frontages for all sub districts. Uh, BL 2021 829 Syracuse Bradford and others, ordinance establishing tree protection, replacement procedures for trees on the properties of certain metro departments. Bill 2021-830, this is item 76, Hurt, Tombs, Rutherford, and others. Ordinance amending Title III of the Metropolitan Code to delete obsolete provisions add certain Department of Emergency Communication employees to the Fire and Police Service Pension Plan. Bill 2021-833 by Sledge, Tombs, and Cash. Ordinance approving the Fourth Amendment to an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Atkinson and Associates Architects, Inc. Bill 2021-834, Taylor, Gamble, Swarin, and others. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Mental Health Cooperative and the Metropolitan Government through the Police Department for the purposes of ensuring the provision, integration, and coordination of behavioral health services for individuals who are mutually served by both organizations. Uh, Bill 2021 836 by Council Gamble, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water main, sanitary sewer manholes, firehand assemblies, and easement for three properties located on Brick Church Pike and Dickerson Pike, also known as Mulberry Downs Phase 3. Bill 2021 837, Roten, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept a new public water main and a firehand assembly for properties located at 3634 Central Pike. Bill 2021 838, Van Reese, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to ban existing public sanitary sewer main and and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer and water main sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies and easements for property located at 218 Maplewood Trace, and BL 2021-839 Hager, Murphy, and Ash, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Rayon Drive Stormwater Improvement Project for A properties located on Rayon Drive, Scenic Valley Road, and Bridgeway Avenue. Those are the bills on uh, consent calendar. Does anything need to be bumped off? <coughs> Seeing none, we are on uh, the third reading consent agenda. Councilman Murphy, it is all yours. Can I just say everything? No, you got a list of my guests. Worth a try. Okay. All right, so I think I caught everything that you said. Let's hope so, because I'm keeping score. So we're going to start with 722. 722. 722. 751 as amended. No, 776. Seven, okay, all right. 776, yeah. 779, 789, yep. 790, yep. 794, 796. Yep. 798. Yep. 808. Yep. 809. 809. 809, no. 809, no. Okay, almost. All right. Uh, 812. Yep. 813. Now I got 814. All right, 814, 816. Yep. 818. Yep. 819. Yep. 820. Yep. 821. Yep. 822. Yep. 823. Yep. 824. Yep. 825. Yep. 826. Yep. 828. 829. Uh, just stop at 828 and you'll be good. 
Oh, 829 is on my consent. No, I have a lot more circled that you said. Yeah, 829 is on consent, but it, I think. All right, hold on. So my list just ended here, right. so let me go but back. It doesn't, that one didn't, 829 did not go to. 829 did not go to you, um, but you're welcome to talk about it if you want. Uh, the rest Just of them to move had us already along. been. The rest of them had already been through, so you can actually stop at 8:28. Okay. okay. Just got excited. They were all 11 in favor, zero against. All right. And what else do I need from you? I would love to move the consent agenda. All right. So I got a motion to move the consent agenda on third reading, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. All right, so that cleared off most of the calendar. We have several bills still left on third. <clears throat> First one is item number 47 uh, by council members Young and Murphy. Uh, 2021-751, ordinance to amend title 17 by change from RS10 to, and R10 to SV zoning for properties located at People's Court unnumbered and Liberty Lane unnumbered at the southern terminus of Heathcote Court. Council member Murphy, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. I Plan believe it's yours. It is. Planning yeah. and zoning uh, was 11 in favor, zero against, as amended. All right. And then, um, if you'll just give me a second. Uh, so what I need for you to do is go back, and you've got an amendment on this bill. Yes, sir. So I'd like to move that amendment. Okay. So we're on bill 2021-751. Uh, Council Member Murphy has moved an amendment to uh, 751. Uh, properly second, back to you for an explanation of the amendment, or I can go to um, uh, Director's I can, item. I can cover it. Okay. So after multiple meetings and follow-ups with neighbors and the developer, further restrictions have been added to limit building materials to no more than 30% vinyl, increased the open space requirement to 20%, and extended the required 20-foot tree easement to homes on Liberty Lane and require an additional 20-foot setback if any attached townhomes are to be built along the property lines adjacent to existing homes. So that is what uh, Councilman Young worked out with uh, with neighbors and uh, the property owners and the and the applicant here. And so with that, I renew my motion for the amendment. All right. So Councilman Murphy has moved an amendment to 2021-751. It's properly seconded. Uh, questions on the amendment, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Do you know if that includes the the protection for the archaeological wall, which was sort of tied in with the buffer? So it, you may have hit it, but I just was wondering if you knew. Um, that's actually something that I brought up in in planning. So I'm not sure. Ms. Seitlin, do we know or um, Matthew? I don't know for sure. I'm sorry. I, I told Lisa Milligan that that we were all set and that we could handle it from here and, and that it was okay to go. Matthew, do you know? Um, so I believe that when they talked about the buffer along um, the 20 foot easement, I think that's what that would um, hit. So that would take that 20 foot easement for the wall and make that a 40 foot buffer if there's attached homes, but it's not explicitly said. No, for the, the, the wall that she's referring to is further in on the property. I think we may have made a condition of approval at the Planning Commission. Could we roll this down three spots and come back to it? Yeah, without objection, we'll roll three spots, see if you can find out, and we'll come back to the bill, okay? All right, and just remember, we're on, uh, we're on the amendment on that bill, okay? Um, okay, next item is um, item number 50, Bill 2021-788 by Council Member Henderson. This is a disapproved bill. Ordinance amend Title 17 by change from RS20 to SP zoning for property located at 4020 Estes Road, approximately 430 feet north of Hobbs Road. It's 1.03 acres. Councilman Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, <coughs> Councilman Murphy. Thank you. We uh, planning and zoning voted 10 in favor with one abstention. Uh, four for the bill. Yes, I'm sorry. Four. Okay. In favor, 10 in favor, one abstention. Okay, uh, Council Member Henderson, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval uh, with a brief explanation, please. Okay, so Council Member Henderson has moved approval properly. Seconded back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, as uh, Council Lady Murphy uh, shared, Chair Murphy, uh, we had a good uh, uh, discussion uh, in planning committee yesterday about a bill that uh, understandably is a little complex and uh, unique. I know colleagues that you have gotten some emails about this. And um, as such, I just wanted to give a, a brief uh, 
explanation for those of you um, who may have missed uh, planning committee or um, previous conversations. Um, this is a unique situation in that my constituents uh, purchased this property with this uh, guest house, uh, former garage uh, out back, um, already uh, habitable and um, already, you know, plumbed and electric and, and so forth. Um, that did not follow the appropriate permit process. Um, the previous owners uh, did not. So they got a permit to uh, uh, do the garage, um, uh, but not um, to make it habitable. So um, when they purchased, that was, you know, fully disclosed. It was part of the real estate listing. And then they went to um, renovate uh, this structure in their backyard to be a pool house guest house. The footprint is not increasing. The height is not increasing. They fully transparently took their plans to codes and were issued valid permits and began the work of um, uh, putting the bedroom in the downstairs uh, garage area rather than upstairs um, with the hope of, you know, having it for their guests and their um, parents and in-laws and so forth. And so um, various, you know, sign-offs, I can't remember if it was electrical or plumbing, but when Metro came back out, they saw that and they thought, oops, wait, this was issued an error and their permit uh, was uh, revoked. And so, you know, this is not really an ideal use of SP zoning, but um, through talking to the BZA and, and so forth and codes, you know, this um, BZA did not have jurisdiction. And so this really is the only remedy uh, for my constituents. If they were to connect these two structures to bring it into compliance, there is a very large 200 year old heritage oak tree right in the path of how you would be able to make that connection to make it compliant. Um, and as such, with this SP zoning, um, this uh, parcel is further constrained. Um, so it eliminates both types of SDR use, no type one, no type two. Um, it also further constrains the structure cannot be heightened, the footprint can never be increased. So through this SP, I want neighbors to understand this previously non-compliant structure is effectively being grandfathered, further constrained, and we are really saving a beautiful, healthy old tree. So with that, um, I renew my motion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Henderson. So the, the motion is to approve 2021-788. It's been seconded. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, uh, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, as planning chair, I felt the need to share um, from the planning commission where we came down on this since it is disapproved. Uh, basically, the, it was presented as Council Lady Allen, I mean, Council Lady Henderson had uh, described it and went into detail. Pretty much, I feel that these owners have exhausted their, their remedies of going through the BZA and then coming to the Metro Council. I drive by this site um, about once or twice a week to go to a meeting and for the life of me could not see this building whatsoever because it's tucked behind the property. The Planning Commission basically decided that we did not want to m make a habit. We felt we were already on record not approving these types of one-off DADU approvals. Uh, I'm really torn on this one because I feel like there, there should be some sort of other remedy if there is an existing structure that's already built out um, or something like that because we don't, I mean, are these owners just expected to tear it down, so on and so forth. We've had these discussions on the floor before. Uh, I, I wish we had some other remedy than rezoning properties one off because permits were issued inappropriately or that homes were built illegally in some sort of fashion. And so I am going to be uh, continuing to abstain tonight on this disapproved bill because I just, I'm, I'm still not comfortable and I don't think that this is the best remedy for it. Um, and so with that though, the Planning Commission did disapprove it based upon uh, the policy and the appropriateness of, of the rezone. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Councilmember Hauser. Yes, uh, the, the question I have for Hannah is how could we prevent this from happening in the future? Because I feel like the council is being asked to remedy an unscrupulous seller who sold to a duped buyer uh, s something that was they should never have happened in the first place. What is the communication when folks come out to uh, permit a, 
electrical or plumbing, do they look at how a property is zoned or is that, are those two departments not talking to each other or what could be done in the future so that we're not asked to basically make right what is wrong? Ms. Seitlin. I think that it's something to discuss with the codes department. They're the ones that would have permitted this particular um, thing. But I think that one of the issues seems to be that they were, there was a permit that was issued for something specific and the, there was later unpermitted work that was performed. And, and I'm not sure that that's something that can really be uh, found out. I mean, other than a seller doing, you know, due diligence when buying the property, but I think that this is, you know, hopefully a rare case. Would the would the buyer have any recourse to go back to the seller? I mean, like if you you sign that sheet that says you don't know of any mold or whatever else in your house, uh, you know, obviously if the person who sold the property knew that it very much said it was zoned to be a garage and not a human habitable space. Uh, that would seem to be just as egregious as saying, I didn't know that there were leaks. It, it would depend on the specifics of the case, but sure, potentially there would be some sort of recourse against a seller. Councilmember Hauser. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we all come to this body with different talents. Um, and Council Member Henderson has a real understanding of planning and zoning. She is one of the most conscientious, thorough, diligent people that I've ever known. And I think it's pretty safe to say that if she says that this is the right thing to do for her neighborhood, for these, uh, to help these folks and to, and to, you know, protect our community, then it's the right thing to do. I just don't know how you can argue with that. And I look forward to supporting it. All right, uh, Council Member Mendez. Thanks. It's going to sound like uh, Dave and I got our comments together. Um, I agree. Um, in six years, I'm not. I don't. I don't think Councilmember Henderson has brought us a disapproved bill. Um, I think hopefully she doesn't mind this characterization. But I think we all know she's a strong stickler for the rules. And with this being the first time she's brought something like this in her time in office, the fact that um, the neighbors are okay with it, the fact what Council Member Murphy describes about not really being able to see it from the road. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna urge people um, on top of Councilman Rosenberg's comments, the, please don't abstain. Because it's disapproved, there needs to be 27 votes. So please just go ahead and um, take into account that uh, this is a, a rare ask from uh, the district lady from District 34. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hancock. I was also was not in coercion and planning remarks in advance, but I would like to thank Councilor Henderson for bringing this to us and sticking up for her constituent. I know that when we got our emails in favor and against, those that were in favor were the neighbors surrounding it. Those that were against were elsewhere in the district worried about what it might look like, not realizing that it's already there and everyone that's right around it that knows it's already there has no problem. And I think that's the biggest thing is taking care of our immediate neighbors and Councilor Henderson is doing that and I appreciate that and I hope everyone supports. Okay, Councilor Mayor Evans. Good. All right, that clears out the queue. All right, so we're on a bill 2021-788. We have a motion to approve on third reading. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? This is a disapproved bill, uh, so we're on the board. Madam Clerk. We ready? I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. I just did something out of order. I need to. I have to reset this. Okay. When you vote, remember uh, it needs 27 votes. Uh, bill 2021-788. If you're for the bill, you'd vote aye. If you're opposed, you'd vote no. Okay. 
Okay, ready to open the machine. All right, uh, ready to vote. Uh, open up the machines. All votes are in. Okay, all votes are in. Uh, close the machine, take the vote. Gets 32 votes for aye, one nay, one abstention. Uh, bill passes on third reading. All right, we're now on BL 2021-798 by Council Members Rosenberg and Benedict, ordinance to amend section 17.16.25 over the Metropolitan Code, limit animal services as activities permitted as home occupation. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. We voted 11 in favor, zero against. Okay, uh, codes, um, whoop, Council Member Cash, there you go. We voted, uh, Two in favor, four against, and one abstention. Okay. Uh, Council Member Rosenberg, uh, you're recognized on your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So this is the, I guess, um, this is the bill that came from codes regarding animal services being provided in homes. Um, there were, uh, as basically repeating my comments from last time, there are basically two pieces to it. One is that currently personal care services is one of the things that you're allowed to have customers to your home to do. That has been interpreted by some to include animals as people. Um, this would clarify that people are only people. Um, the other piece of it is that it, we have a very small list of business uses that you're not allowed to do inside your home, even if it complies with, uh, you know, customers don't come over, it's not noisy, all those things. This would add, uh, animal care services to that list. Um, I'm here to listen to opinions on it. If people want to make changes of it, I think it probably would need to get kicked back to second reading to do that. But um, whatever people's thoughts are, I'm open to it. I think that the first part of the bill is important to either pass or clarify in the other direction. So I'd, I would prefer it not get, you know, I think that we eventually need to pass something, but if it's something that people want to talk about and to amend, we could move back to second and we'll see where the conversation goes. Thank you. All right, so uh, Councilman Rosenberg, what do you want to do on your bill? Details, details, uh, I'll move approval, okay. thank you. All right, so Councilman Rosenberg has moved approval of 2021-798 on third reading, it's properly seconded. All right, so um, there's nobody in the queue any discussion on the bill? All right, uh, because it got four votes, four negative votes in codes, um, I think we have to go on the board. All right, so um, Madam Clerk, uh, so here's where we are, BL 2021-798. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg and Benedict are the sponsors, ordinance to amend section 17.16.25 over the Metropolitan Code to limit animal services as activities permitted as home occupations. We're voting on uh, approval on third reading. Madam Clerk, tell me if you're ready to uh, open the machines. Uh, Council Member Nash, before, um, uh, we haven't opened them yet, so Council Member Nash. Uh, what were the no's concerning I was from codes? Um, so I don't know. <laughs> so um, um, Council Member Cash, do you wish to be recognized? So I don't want to speak for other folks. I mean, I, I guess the sense was it just wasn't as big of a deal, or I think there were some folks who felt that <laughs> dogs are people. Um, <laughs> and and while that while I got while I, while I got a laugh out of that, um, I mean, I kind of think that was the 
if not the biologically correct answer, the, the sentiment. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Lee, you're recognized. Yes, um, I have a question. I don't really understand, so I guess um, uh, this is a question instead of a comment about what the no's are. What, what is the reason that we're bringing this? What is the problem that this was coming up with? So, um, and if we have yes. discussed this all over again, I'm sorry, y'all can blame it on my uh, CRS kicking in. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I, that's that's my question specifically. Why? Why? So, Councilmember Lee, are you asking why the bill or why people are voting no? No, I am asking what what is the reason for the bill? Yeah. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilmember. Um, codes was not, didn't have, feel like they had clarity on whether to approve home occupation permits for people who are going to be taking care of dogs, for grooming dogs, for example, because we approved personal care, but there are people arguing that personal care includes dogs, so they were hoping for some clarity on that. Councilmember Lee? So the bill is because they weren't sure on what it was, not because they didn't want people to have grooming in their homes. Councilor Rosenberg. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, 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 this is the proposal that came from codes to do this when they realized that our intent was really about taking care of humans. Um, also, I thought, you know, I'm pretty agnostic. The planning staff made a pretty compelling argument about the nature of animal grooming businesses in their staff report um, before it went to the planning commission about the overall like use of, you know, homes for pet related businesses and residential areas. But yes, this was, uh, this was drafted by codes for our consideration. I am going to abstain on this simply because I don't fully understand it because I don't see a problem with cutting the baby's hair in, in a house if I can't do it and go on to have somebody else to do it, but it doesn't sound like this is exactly what that bill is about. So because I'm still unsure and it doesn't totally sound right to me, I'm going to abstain on your bill. Councilor Rosenberg. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for that. I mean, if it's something that the body feels warrants more discussion than a motion to reconsider or, our, or rescind our vote of passage on second reading would be something that could be entertained. Um, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here as a vehicle for this and, and open to what every, everyone wants to do. Okay. Again, let's explain where we are. We, we were just about to vote on this bill on third reading. Um, and I, the motion right now, the current motion is to move for passage. Okay, thank you, and I'm sorry, this wouldn't have to go back to second. I didn't realize, uh, Councilmember Murphy just mentioned it's a Title 17 bill, so it could be amended on third if that's something people want to do okay. after a deferral. All right, uh, Councilmember Hancock, uh, you're recognized. I was one of the new votes in code, so I just thought I'd share my reason why I voted no. There is a dog training facility in my district as well as a dog rehabilitation facility in my district, and I asked, um, the code's uh, representative, which was um, a lawyer as well, um, who was in the room, if it would pertain to those. And she said it would be up to the inspector. They could determine that. And so that would essentially, you know, shut down these two businesses or limit them to, what, three visits a day. And I do not um, agree with that. And I want these businesses to stay in place. Granted, my district, at least where these two are, is more rural. And so... Um, you wouldn't think traffic would bother people, but it, traffic does bother people. And these two businesses have had no complaints and people love that they're there. And lots of people in our area have dogs and we're big fans of dogs in District 9. So I'm going to vote against this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shulman. I was also one of the no votes, at least in committee. Um, um, uh, you know, we are some dog loving people in East Nashville. And, um, you know, with the uh, home occupation bill having passed, um, you know, if, if someone can cut uh, my hair in their home, uh, if I had 
if I had a dog uh, or a cat that needed to be groomed, I don't understand what the difference would be, uh, although they would have more hair than I do to cut. Um, so really that was just kind of it. And also council member uh, Hancock, uh, uh, articulated also that we had a great discussion with uh, Ms. Lamb from Codes about the the uh, VZA case that sort of brought this. It really is a, a complicated legal matter um, that I think possibly warrants more discussion. Um, but what I will say is that at this point, I'm going to go ahead and support the bill and encourage people to do that. If we do hear from constituents, especially from 37206, that they do in fact want to have dog grooming in home occupation businesses, we could take that up as a separate piece of legislation later. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Sledge. Previous question. All right, so uh, Councilor Sledge has called the previous question. We're not voting on the bill, just the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. So we are on the bill. It is, um, uh, BL 2021 798 for passage on third reading. Um, we're going to go on the board. Madam Clerk, are you ready? Okay. So, um, Madam Clerk, uh, open up the machines. You're voting uh, on BL 2021 798 is for third reading. It requires 21 votes for passage. Madam Clark. Um, I believe almost everyone has voted vice mayor. There may be some council members who wish not to vote. All right, so um, the board is um, open, but we're getting ready to close it. If you want to vote, make sure you vote. Okay, all votes are in. All votes are in. Uh, close machine, take the vote. Sometimes takes a moment. 27 uh, in favor, five against, two yep, abstentions. 27 in favor, five against. Uh, bill passes on third reading. Okay. Uh, we're on item number 57, BL 2021-809 by Council Member Lee, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending ordinance number BL 2006-1303 as amended by amending the uh, SP zoning for various properties located north of Maxwell Road. That's 52.94 acres, approximately 430 feet east of Flagstone Drive. Delete the condition of the SP pertaining to the construction of turn lanes at the intersection of Maxwell Road and Laverne Council Pike, and to accept a financial contribution in lieu of construction from the developer of the Davenport Downs SP. Councilmember Lee, you are recognized. Mr. Chairman, I'd like community uh, committee reports, please. Uh -huh. Planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. Happy to give the community or the committee report. <laughs> we voted either 11 one. in favor, zero against on the amendment and as amended. Okay, uh, back to you, Councilmember Lee. Yes, this has an amendment. I would like to move the amendment, please. Okay, so Councilmember Lee has moved an amendment to Bill 2021-809, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Uh, the amendment just was, I guess, specifics, and I may ask for um, uh, Public Works to, to help me with this, but it was just um, some specifics around being able to do what the bill wanted to do. Matthew, I've got you. Okay. So, I think uh, Matthew, okay. No, sorry. Um, so the amendment essentially corrected some errors in the initial bill um, by adding another bill that was associated with this SP, as well as attaching a sketch page to the ordinance, attaching the SP plans to assure they weren't accidentally deleted. And then it added, it modified a whereas clause to, um, as, as a request from NDOT to state that uh, Brian Seagraves um, which was initially just listed as the developer is actually representing AMH development. So AMH development is the developer, not Brian Seagraves, Brian Seagraves, is, and that's really all it does. Okay, Councilor Merle. Yes, I would like to um, continue and move the amendment, please. Okay, so you've heard an explanation of the amendment. Council Member Lee has moved the amendment. It's properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the amendment. 
Seeing none, uh, we're on uh, her amendment. All in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Right, yeah. Thank you, sir. I'd like to move the bill as amended. Okay, so uh, Councilmember Lee has moved Bill 2021-809 as amended on for passage on third and final reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, I'm sorry, on, on the bill as amended. Uh, seeing none, nobody in the, in the queue, BL 2021-809 as amended. Uh, we're ready to vote. All in favor of it on passage on third reading say aye. Opposed, no. BL 2021-809 as amended passes on third reading. Thank you, sir. All right, so now we're going to go back to um, BL 2021-751 by Council Member Murphy. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, uh, do we have an answer for the question that Councilmember Allen asked? Yes, thank you. To, uh, to just remind you all, uh, the historic wall, it, the, part five, I believe it's number five of the amendment, requires that there is a historic survey and things, uh, and the wall be taken care of. I'm sorry, now I've forgotten. Matthew, is it a is it preserved or? Uh, yeah, so um, condition or specific plan standard five in the modified uh, regulatory SP states that a survey will be completed to identify and preserve historic and environmental features. The survey's findings will be provided with the final site plan application and that preservation of features will be coordinated with Metro Historic staff members. Okay, Councilor Murphy. I think we're all good then. Okay, great. All right, Councilor um, Murphy. Can't With remember. that, I uh, would like to renew my motion on the amendment. Okay, so we got a motion on the amendment, properly seconded. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm satisfied. I appreciate that information being provided. All right, thank you, Council Member Allen. So we're on um, the amendment. Uh, motion is to approve the amendment properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment on 2021-751 say aye. Opposed, no. Motion, the amendment passes. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill as amended. Renew my motion. So Councilmember Murphy is uh, moving 2021-751 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, passage on third and final reading say aye. Opposed, no. Bill as amended passes on third and final reading. All right, I think we've got uh, just a couple more bills. I think there's four more bills. We're on item number 58, BL 2021 811 by Council Member Roberts. It's an ordinance amend Title 17 by change from R6 to RM9 for properties located at 5607, 5607B. 5609 and 5611 Morrow Road, approximately 60 feet southeast of 50, 57th Avenue South, 2.46 acres. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. This was deferred by rule. Deferred by rule. Council Member uh, Roberts, it's deferred by rule, so it'll show up on the next meeting. Thank you. May I suspend the rules, please? Um, so Council Member Roberts uh, has, is moving to suspend the rules. Now, so the, it would have to be two suspensions, right? Because um, there is no committee report. So there is no, the rule says that it has to have a committee report. So you want to suspend that rule? Yes, please. Is there another, is she spending anything else or is that it? That's it, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so Council Member Roberts wants to move to suspend the rules. Uh, to get this matter heard tonight. And the rule that's being suspended is that it has not gone, gone through a committee to actually have a recommendation, okay? So Council Member Roberts has moved to suspend the rules. Uh, you didn't go through rules, right? The rules committee. No, correct. Okay, all right. So is there objection to suspension of the rules tonight to have this matter heard? Any objections? Hold on. Councilmember Johnson, yeah, you did not hear this. Okay. Yeah, we didn't hear this one. I'm okay, is there objection to suspension of the rules? There's one, two. Okay, so you can't you can't suspend the rules tonight. Okay, okay. so it automatically goes. It's deferred by rule, so it goes to the next meeting. And who was the one um, objection? There were two objections. And who were they? I just didn't see them raise their hands. Well, so you had an objection for Councilmember Murphy and an objection for Councilmember Allen. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. 
All right, we're on uh, item number 60, BL 2021-813 by Council Member Toombs. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing RS-10 and R-8 and SP zoning for properties located at 1105 and 1107 West Trinity Lane. West Trinity Lane unnumbered and Old Buena Vista Road unnumbered permit 193 multifamily residential units. Uh, Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilor Murphy. Thank you. I have us as 11 in favor, zero against on the amendment and as amended. All right, uh, Council Member Toombs, back to you. Thank you, I'd like to move my amendment. All right, so Council Member Toombs has an amendment. Uh, she's properly moved it, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. The amendment adds um, that the developer will work with the Department of Transportation to put in a traffic calming uh, project on Old Buena Vista and that the developer will cover the cost. Okay, so you've heard the explanation of the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? It's been properly moved and properly seconded. We're voting on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment passes. Councilor Artoums, you're on your bill as amended. Move for approval. So Councilor Artoums says move for approval of BL 2021-813 as amended on third and final reading. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Let's try that again. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third and final reading. Uh, BL 2021-815, uh, uh, item number 62. This is by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17, Part change from CS, IWD, MUL, and MULA to SP zoning for properties located at 1214, 1216, 1218, 1220, 1230, and 1232 Martin Street, 1309 Brown Street, 441, 447, 448, 449, and 451 Humphrey Street, and Humphrey Street unnumbered, along Houston Street, down Brown Street, and along either side of Humphrey Street is 6.12 acres. Council Member Sledge, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. Thank you. We voted 11 in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, amendment? As amended. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Sledge, back to you. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the amendment with an explanation. All right. So Councilmember Sledge has moved an amendment on 2021-815, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you. This amendment um, adjusts one condition. It extends the bike lane to be built with this development um, to Lafayette Street and then adds a condition with additional requirements and guidelines regarding preservation and restoration of the Merritt Mansion. Um, with that, I renew my motion uh, to approve the amendment. Okay, so Council Member Sledge has explained the amendment. There's a proper motion, proper second. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move approval with a very brief comment. All right, so Council Member Sledge has moved approval on third and final reading of 2021-815 as amended, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you. Um, colleagues, thanks for bearing with me on this. This is, as indicated by how many addresses were in the uh, uh, summary, this is a major rezoning of the commercial portion of Wedgwood Houston. That includes the historic Merritt Mansion. And I wanted to thank the applicant for engaging in good faith negotiations with the neighborhood, and especially wanted to thank the neighborhood organization who spent countless hours working through this and as a result has, um, I think, come to a much, uh, much approved agreement from when it was initially introduced. And with that, I would ask for your support. All right, so Councilmember Sledge has moved approval of 2021-815 as amended on third and final reading. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 2021-815 as amended on third and final reading, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. Uh, BL 2021-815 as amended, passes on third and final reading. Item number 64, BL 2021-817 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing R10 to SP zoning for properties located at 3051 Stokers Lane, Northwest Corner of Stokers Lane and Buena Vista Pike, 10.74 acres, print 96 multifamily residential units. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Council Member Murphy, planning and zoning. 11 in favor, zero against as amended. All right, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, I'd like to move my amendment. Uh, Council Member Toombs moves amendment, amendment to BL 2021-817, properly seconded back to you for an explanation. The amendment um, adds that the developer will work with the Department of Transportation to um, install traffic calming initiatives along Stokers Lane at the developer's expense, as well as do an additional traffic study to determine 
whether or not a, um, a traffic signal should be installed or other uh, pedestrian crossing um, at the developer's expense as well. Okay, that's the explanation of the amendment. Again, it's moved and seconded. Council Member Allen? On the bill as amended. Okay. Uh, any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, uh, we're voting on the amendment uh, to 2021-817. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment passes. Councilmember Toombs, you're on your bill as amended. Move for approval. Move for approval. Properly seconded. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I, I just have a question. Maybe the sponsor can answer if uh, if the school capacity um, that would be required for these 96 units has been looked at. Councilmember Toombs. That is something that um, has been looked at. I don't recall uh, what it is, but it does, the schools in that area are under capacity, so it wouldn't. Councilmember Allen. Councilmember Allen's okay. Councilmember Toombs, we're back on your bill as amended for passage on third and final reading. Anybody else in the queue? All those in favor of the bill as amended on for passage on third and final reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, your bill passes um, on third and final reading as amended. Um, I believe, is that it? That's it. So, Council Member Henderson, for what reason? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just a moment of personal privilege to bring colleagues' attention to uh, a resolution that the, the body passed earlier, 1109, honoring and uh, recognizing the achievements of our Nashville Olympian, Alex Walsh. Um, I wanted to give colleagues the opportunity. Um, Councilman Pulley uh, spoke to her success uh, at our previous meeting. The Walsh family lives in District 25. Uh, but Alex was a, a teammate and a, a member of the Harpeth Hall swim team, and Harpeth Hall is in District 34. Um, so I just want to bring your attention to the resolution 1109 um, and ask uh, the clerk, uh, with colleagues' uh, permission, um, to uh, sign everybody on to this, um, honoring this young woman. This is something that our Women's Caucus uh, wanted to bring this bill um, uh, to thank her uh, for her... Uh, uh, just a, a fine example of a young woman who has really worked very hard and, um, uh, and achieved a, a great uh, life goal. So um, with that, uh, Vice Mayor, just want to ask if the clerk could please sign us all on. All right. So what you want is without objection, everybody who voted tonight is listed as a sponsor on the, on the resolution. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any objection to, to doing that? Seeing none, um, everybody who, who voted tonight uh, is listed as a, as a sponsor on the resolution. Um, anything else? I believe we got it all. Uh, motion to approve, uh, uh, to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn, properly seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. And so the Metro Council has concluded about a two hour and 50 minute meeting uh, on a agenda that was uh, 34 pages long. That's rather short for the council, but the council tends to be a little short. It's not having to deal with public hearings on uh, zoning matters, and there were none of those up tonight, although there are a number of bills to be approved on zoning matters that were on third reading, and a number of those went through tonight. One was uh, disapproved by the Planning Commission. That takes 27 votes. Uh, council did, in that case, give 27 votes. Uh, it's always a tough situation for council members, but the district councilman uh, felt like it was good for the community, and the community itself did not have much objections to it, so the, uh, the bill went ahead and passed tonight, uh, even though, again, that's a little bit unusual to have that happen. Council's most significant legislation tonight were actually two bills it did not consider. Uh, one was a late resolution, one was a, no, there was a late ordinance. Both would have empowered the Metro Board of Health to uh, issue a mask mandate uh, in all public areas and all public buildings, buildings that are available to the public. So, the, uh, the, frankly, there was not a lot of support for that from the, from the health department at this point. Uh, the, not that the COVID is getting better, but that they didn't appear like it was ready to do that at this point. As you, now, both those bills uh, can come back to the council if they are properly uh, filed. It will be up at the first council meeting in September, which will be three weeks from now on September the 6th. Uh, council also did approve tonight a, a, a resolution that is in support of the Metro School Board already has a mask mandate for its uh, students in schools. That is still in place. Uh, resolution supported that, uh, this mask mandate because they believe it will increase the likelihood of schools remaining open. 
uh, you may you may know that Governor Bill Lee has issued an executive order on Monday that forbids uh, school boards or boards of health to issue mask mandates impacting schools that they opt out for for parents. Metro does not have that, so that could be a. a a flashpoint going forward, and maybe another reason why the council did not decided it did not want to get in tonight passing these other resolutions and ordinances that might have further gotten into that in terms of mass mandates. Council also approved a resolution tonight that hires a new uh, Metro Chief Medical Officer and Health Director, Dr. Gil Wright. He's been acting in that position for the past uh, seven months during the pandemic. His contract is for three years with a base salary of $235,000. The Health Director's contract is the only one that the Metro Department, of any Metro Department has that the Council must approve under the City Charter. That the, way that we, the reason that's it that way is because the original and longtime uh, Metro Health Director, Dr. John Lins, wanted it that way, and 58 years later, it's still that way. Other resolutions the Council approved tonight included a 10-year solid waste plan for the city with the goal of achieving solid waste, uh, zero solid waste in within 30 years. There were some concerns about that from the, in terms of costs and other things from staff, but Council went ahead and approved the resolution that approves the plan, and we'll see how they go forward with trying to implement it. Council also approved Metro Action Commission accepting $9.2 million from the American Rescue Funds to assist eligible households in Nashville unable to pay their rent and utilities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This has been a problem across the country. Metro is supposedly ahead of the curve on that, but again, there's a great need for that. One other COVID-related matter the Council had tonight, this is a late resolution that the Council did approve. It was for three point, it was accepting a grant from the federal government under its sheltered venues uh, program, which passed in the second COVID relief. It was in January uh, before the end of the year last year. Uh, excuse me, late December before the end of the year last year. 1.5 million uh, will go to the municipal auditorium. The city uh, was eligible to apply for that, so they did, and, and, and the auditorium will receive 1.5 million to make up for some of the lost revenues that, that happened during the pandemic because of lost shows. Council also approved uh, extra money for the state, for the, from the state, for Metro Police to $150,000 to reduce gun violence in target areas. The money would be used for equipment and police overtime. Uh, they also okayed a, a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control, $15,000 plus for, for families experiencing difficulty maintaining ownership of their pets, for funding a microchip clinic and emergency care for shelter. And shelter Animals also increased a grant from the state, uh, accepted those funds, $178,000 more, for the health department to prevent and control the use of tobacco. Uh, they had quite a uh, discussion tonight about uh, the use of electric bikes on city greenways. The council member wanted to, and the council did ultimately pass a resolution asking for the city to get some more information from how it's going on right now in the city's greenways, what's happening in other cities, and not pass any resolutions about it or ordinances about it until that gets set, set up. Some council members were not happy about some of the language that was put in, particularly an amendment. They fought over the amendment. They fought over an amendment to the amendment. And they also fought over whether or not to defer the bill for two meetings. Uh, all those did not happen. And what happened at the end is they approved the bill, the resolution to move forward. Council also approved the settlement claim by the city. Uh, it was filed by Nashville State Representative uh, Vincent Dixie, who had a, a damage in his own personal business by, by Metro water main uh, breaking, and so this was the settlement of that situation. Also recognize, you heard about this uh, at the very end, the, the achievement of Nashville swimmer and Olympian bronze medalist, Alex Walsh of Harpeth Hall High School. She was honored by the council, and all the members of the council will now sign on to that. We'll probably be presenting her at some time in the future. Also tonight, the council had a resolution it seems simple enough at celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Frisk Museum downtown, but apparently the council member who sponsored it had not talked to the district councilman in the downtown area. And I don't think he was happy about that. Also, district councilman said that nobody at the Frisk Center had been contacted about this, so he moved for the bill to be deferred. That's a little unusual for memorializing resolutions, but that's what happened, and the council went along with doing that. The council, again, was asked to take up the license plate uh, uh, scanners issue. They had two bills again before them. And as they did before, since one of the bills had to be automatically deferred, the second bill was deferred as well tonight. So again, the council has once again looked at this issue and right now decided to defer for the time being. Council approved on second reading the bill to ban intermodal containers on residential properties after 90 days. Asked for a study for future infrastructure needs in Nashville. Uh, council deferred that again tonight. Apparently there's more work to, treat, to get this worked out through the administration if that's possible. Water sewer officials say there's already plenty of studies about this and are already available. Also, um, on third reading, the council approved a contract between Metro Police and the Metro Health Cooperative. That group will support officers in responding to mental health crisis and calls for service. And finally, on third reading, the council approved uh, a bill to establish 
a protection and replacement plan for trees on city property. Council is now in recess for three weeks, back here the first Monday in September. It'll be September 6th. Metro Nashville Network will be providing live coverage of that. Until then, I'm, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night, folks. Good night from the Council Chambers. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.